Good afternoon and welcome to the New River Stadium here in North London for the final game of this 2022 Brit Bowl weekend. This is the Division 1 Championship game between the East Kilbride Pirates and the Cambridge Cats. I'm Matt Walker and I'm joined as ever by my friend and co-colleague, Mr Carl Walkinshaw. How are you, Carl? Hi, Matt. Well, it's been three games down, one to go. What a weekend. KP against Cambridge should be excellent. Great weekend so far and this weather is just unbelievable. The forecast was terrible but here we are in the sun, the September sun here in North London. What promises it to be? a fantastic culmination of four games this weekend between these East Kilbride Pirates and the Cambridge Cats. Um, we're going to briefly run through these two teams, bring you some interviews, get the, a feel of how the weekend's been and how this one's hotting up. We're also going to bring um, director Pete Ackley in for a chat with you later, Carl. So we've got yeah. lots to get through before we actually go to kick-off, which is 5pm today. So let's, without further ado, go to those teams. First of all, Carl, the home team, East Kilbride Pirates. Stalwarts of the British game. Premier League, uh, Premiership uh, contenders for a long time, fallen out of favour just recently, but now they've resurged. They really have, and you'll remember all those years that EKP were you know, kings of the north for so many years, and we were always seeing them in the finals and playing at the top echelon of British America football in the Premiership. And then they fell off. The Tamworth Phoenix began to take the titles in the north, and the crown fell. But EKP went back down into the division, rebuilt, and they're here today. They've already won the place to the Premiership, and they're here today to face the Cambridge Cats for the bragging rights of who gets to call themselves the Div 1 champion. So it should be a really exciting game. And great point you make there, Cole. This is the cherry on the cake for both these teams. Both the Cambridgeshire Cats and the East Kilbride Pirates will be promoted to the Premier League Premiership next year. So it's a kind of a strange one because they've achieved their season goal, but it's now about trying to get this, this final gold medal. This is the first Premiership action that both of these teams have had. That's how they have to see it. You know, both these teams have the quality. Those two, two Premiership teams will come down and two Div 1 teams will go up and they've really earned it. I'm excited to see EKB back in the Premiership. That name is synonymous with Premiership football over so many years and it will be excellent to see them back up there, you know, battling out with the likes of Manchester Titans and the Tamworth Phoenix and those rivalries, those real big North rivalries will, will begin all over again. Well, the Manchester Titans blew things wide open in the British game yesterday with their Brit Bowl 34 victory over those London Warriors. First time in eight years or so that the Warriors haven't won a Brit Bowl. The Tamworth Phoenix were successful in 2017 but the Warriors have been a dynasty in British football that has just carried on, just setting the standard. Um, these Pirates then, the Pirates and the Cats, they played a 10-game schedule, then they've played a quarter-final, then they played a semi-final, so there's been 12 games before today. Pretty brutal. Yeah, it's been a tough season. I know when we spoke to the head coaches, you'll hear from them directly. There's not, they've not won all their games out. You know, these are not two completely dominant teams. Div 1 is a very competitive conference, both in the south and in the north, so they've had to you know, go through all the trials and tribulations of the season. They've lost players, they've lost games, they've had to be resilient, they've had to grow throughout the season, so they reach their peak at the playoffs, and both of those teams have done that. But it's by no means easy to get here at all, and they deserve, both of them, the place in this final. I managed to catch up with head coach of the Pirates, Andrew McGowan, earlier on, just to see how he was feeling leading into this one, and to see his thoughts about the Pirates season so far kind of a cherry on the cake uh, game for the Pirates. You've been promoted to the Premiership, sure. which many would say is where you guys belong. Um, talk to us a little bit about this season and what's been the, the tipping point to getting you over the edge back into the Prem. I think uh, the last full season we had pre-Covid, we were very close. We got beat uh, just narrowly, narrowly um, kind of getting promoted into mm. the Premiership. Um, I think this season it's just been a little bit more of the same. Um, our, our offence is really clicking now, kind of halfway through the season has been getting going. So I think that at this point in time, all three aspects of the, of the game are really kind of adding to the team. Um, but yeah, there's not, not a real difference since, since the kind of last season that we played fully. So um, we're just kind of continuing on from that and just adding to our roster kind of key spots. Okay, relatively new to the head coaching role yourself yeah. as well. What, what's your kind of coaching philosophy? What do you ask of your players as a, as a sort of benchmark fundamental? Um, I am really a, a big um, fan of guys... Um, showing leadership, but not necessarily through being captains. I like to kind of give guys the opportunity to lead themselves. Um, and really, I try and only get too inv involved if, you know, if things are going askew. Okay. Um, so I let kind of guys do their own thing, and particularly positional coaches as well, I kind of let them do their own thing, trust them to kind of make the adjustments that they need to make. And to that end, mm -hmm. when we see EKP take the field, is it a sort of defence-dominated unit or offence lead the way? How is it sort of kind of structured? I would say traditionally, we, or certainly over the last couple of years, defence probably would have dominated. 
Um, but as I say, in the last half of the season, so maybe the four, last four, five, six games, the offence have really come into their own. So I feel right now we're playing really good complementary football and then special teams is, is pretty good as well. We've got a new special teams coordinator this year, uh, Gordon Wallace, and he's done a great job as well. So I do feel, not just saying this for the purpose of the interview, but I really feel that all three phases of our game are kind of coming together at the right time. And I know a lot of coaches don't like answering this particular question because of the sort of, it is a team game. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular players we should look out for in any three phases? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant to kind of give names as well. I will say, since uh, Neil Baptiste come, come back at quarterback, kind of halfway through the season, that's made a big um, difference. I think just the consistency that he provides and the leadership, and he has been with the team for as long as me, so probably about 12, 13 years now. So he's making a big difference and Mark Stewart, uh, number 50, on the other side of the ball, um, is a fantastic player, so he's one to watch out for. Okay. Know much about your, op your uh, opposition today, Cambridge Cats? We have done uh, as much prep as we possibly can um, through film. Um, it's hard to know. Um, we played Leicester two weeks ago, yeah. and without ever really having played any of the teams that they had played, there's no real benchmark. No. Um, no. So it's hard to know. And Likewise with Cambridge, we've not played any of the teams that they've played. So when we see them on film, we, we just don't know really how they stack up against us. And equally as well, I know you said off camera to me that you've got your own little wrinkles that you brought today that Cambridge won't have seen, and I'm sure, sure. they're the same. So we, we look forward to a fantastic outing to wrap up this Brit Bowl weekend. And sure. thank you ever so much for your time, yeah. which I know is a very precious, is a busy time for you. Yeah, no, thank you All for right. having me. Thanks thank very you. much. Cheers. Coach uh, Andrew McGowan does ever so well to get to this point and the playoff run that he's had to go through. Quarter final against the Northumberland Vikings, 42 6 winners there. And then the Leicester Falcons, the tough Leicester Falcons, they ran out 29 21 winners, did the East Kilbride Pirates. They really did, and uh, he, he's done a fantastic job. And I think a lot of people weren't sure which way that EKP Leicester Falcons game would go, and they've, they, you know, they've managed to get that win. And I know it went back and forth a number of times. That tests the team. You know, iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. And it means that they'll be tougher coming into this final. So let's turn our attention then to their opponents this afternoon, the Cambridgeshire Caps. They come in with an 8-2 and two record, um, but themselves had a, a tough playoff run. Tell us what you know about the Caps, Cole. They are a very exciting team, dynamic team. They've got some real speed. You'll hear from their head coach in a minute. But they also had their challenges. You know, they had to come and overcome the Wembley Stallions in the quarterfinals, and they beat them 35-14. They're averaging about 36 points a game. They only concede about 16 points a game, so they're a really effective unit. But the real test for them came against the Hertfordshire Cheetahs, a team that I know quite well. Yeah. I know that sort of ex-coaches down there and ex-NTU players that are playing for the Cheetahs, and I wasn't sure Cambridge would come through that. 44-34 in a shootout. So this team can really put points on the board and that uh, will be exciting to see as we get into this final. Interesting because they can not only put points on the board but they do tend to ship a fair amount of points as well defensively so that shootout mentality could well be the case this afternoon. So obviously from that Cambridge perspective you managed to catch up with their head coach Andy White Oak and we'll bring you that interview right now. Coach Andy White Oak, welcome Andy and congratulations on making it to the Premiership. Thank you, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good season, so pretty happy to be here. That was my first question. Tell us about your season. You've had a good one, there's a couple of losses in there, but it's been a really good season for you. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's, as you said, there's been a couple of losses. Uh, you know, we've faced a bit of adversity through a couple, you know, two, losing two games, losing a couple of players along the way, but we've gelled as a team as we've gone along. We've really grown together. It's been good to see everyone become part of the same unit and share the same goal, so... And you're here today, you're playing the East Kilbride Pirates that used to be, they were premiership team for a very long time. They pose some challenges. How do you feel you're face up against them today? As you said, they've got, you know, premiership pedigree. They've been around for a long time um, and at the top of the game, you know, so they are a genuine threat. We take them very seriously. We've done probably more work in preparation than we have all year for any other team. Um, yeah, we're not going to take them lightly, really. We've got to play them the same way we've played everyone else, so... Now, what I hear on the grapevine is that this Cambridgeshire Cats team is an exciting team. There's lots of speed. There's lots of kind of good players, both on offence and defence. Who are the people we should really should be watching on the box today? Well, uh, if I was going to choose a few people to watch, I'd say one of them would definitely be uh, number four, Michael John Johnson, uh, wide receiver. He's as fast as his name is uh, suggested it would be. Uh, you know, he's going to be a real threat on defence. I'd say there's, um, you know, our inside backers are real rovers when it comes to uh, their inside runs. So this will be some big hits today from uh, Ben Bailey and uh, Johnny Hodgson. 
All right, that's excellent. Well, we wish you all the very best for the game, head coach White Oak, and uh, we'll see you after the game. Thank you very much. Cheers. Welcome back. That was a great interview with head coach Andy White Oak from the Cambridgeshire Cats. But I'm really pleased to be joined by Chief Executive Pete Ackley. Welcome to the show, Pete. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been a long weekend, but it's been a great weekend. Yeah, it's been a long it's weekend. Been a long Tell weekend. me about it. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> game three or four, we're just go one back to go. But um, tell us about the weekend, Pete, because obviously this is the diamond in the crown, isn't it, for you guys? Yeah, it's the culmination. We, you know, we, we've had our 16s and 19s games already. We're into the you know, sort of Brit Bowl weekend. We've still got flag finals day next weekend, as, long as, as well as the women's championships coming up on next Saturday and the Saturday after. So there's still, we're still in the middle of a lot of finals. But yeah, this has been a, it's been a great weekend. It's been... Well, the weather's helped, that's for sure. But we actually, what we've had is some 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 good games or some great games, and I think no no better than the one we're about to about to watch right now. Yeah. Now the the game today we'll get to, but I wanted to talk to you about that tremendous Manchester Titans victory last night. I know that. What did you make of that? Because the atmosphere was just amazing. Here. Yeah, it was an amazing g game. It was. Um, I think earlier this year when we had the university finals, someone said, well, "I've never seen a game as exciting, as close, and as dynamic as the, the university finals game." That was up there with it. You know, Titans came with a plan and executed it really well. So, you know, it's, it's one of those. They're, they're a team who've done amazing things as a club. Not just they've turned up with a team. They've done amazing things as a club. They've developed their players. They've developed their club in the community. They do some great things. And last night, they were just too good for the Warriors. Now, tell us about your year, because you've had a tumultuous year. I mean, you, got, you got involved in the role, what, three years ago when just you became under, chief? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, just under three years ago. And then uh, you had COVID hit, so nobody yeah. could really meet Pete Ackley because we were all locked away <laughs> in our bedroom. So, yeah, I met but most now people you're, on screen. Yeah, <laughs> but now you're out and about, and you're doing these, uh, I don't think it's show and tells, but they're called town, town halls. halls. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is great. So tell us about your year. How's it been? Yeah, so... Coming into this season, you know, we've had two years of, you know, no one wants to go through that again, and it's, it's, it, it was tough. And there's no point in saying that it's been tough for everybody, for families and, and so on and so forth. But we're now coming out of that, and now we're coming into, as I keep saying at the town halls and in the meetings, it's my first real season of American football in Britain. So I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I now see for the first time, and make, will make decisions based on this season and based on what I see and how we can take the game forward. Made a real clear long-term vision we're going to professionalize this game on and off the field we're going to inspire more people to play and play a part and that's fundamentally everything we will do we'll be progressive in everything we do we'll be responsive to the needs of our players and our clubs and our coaches and our volunteers we'll be inclusive which we are i think being inclusive as a sport we need to make it more accessible particularly for women and girls um, but we'll be driven now by doing all the right things and doing things right and ultimately by doing all those things we create an enjoyable experience because that's what we want to do so what have been the highlights for you you talked a bit about growth there so where do you feel like the big net because this is the adult finals obviously but there's so many other things going on different levels of the sport where's the real growth that you're seeing over the next couple well, of years the, the real growth will come from uh in our in our youth in our youth teams it'll also come from our women and girls team and let's not take any way we've now got a women's team it's number two in the world yeah, yeah they've gone to finland and perf the performance their application their dedicate what they did was just Amazing. awesome yeah. um, that then gives us a really great platform now to to really focus on what we do with the women's game they've got to play more 11 aside football so we've got to create that within the whole process they've got to play more 11 aside we've got to get more people into the sport transitioning from other sports um, but the youth element is the key Manchester showed it EKP have shown it they've grown their own players and that's one of the key things we need to now do. But that's for us, as, as a board and myself as chief exec, we've now got to sort of look ahead and say, what's coming down the road? It's going to be tough. You know, we all know that the, the, the world's yeah. a very different place right now and there's going to be some challenges. No, make no mistake about those challenges. What we have to do is say, how can we support and help and develop our clubs to, to be resilient in those times Excellent. and build on what we've seen today. So good to speak to you, Pete. I wish we had more time. The Cambridgeshire Cats are just going to come onto the field, so I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to leave you one last question. What's the big uh, challenge for you over the next year? The big challenge for us is to make sure all our clubs are sustainable and resilient to the challenges they're going to have, and we'll help them do that. All right, Pete Ackley, thank you so much. Let's throw it back upstairs to Matt, and let's begin this great Div 1 final. Over to you, Matt. Thank you, Carl. As we see the Cambridgeshire Cats take their place on this New River Stadium, turf for the culmination of not only Brit Ball weekend but the British American football season for Division One. As Conline mentioned in our build-up, 
This might be the last game in Division 1 for these guys, but technically, it's the first game of the Premiership. As both these outfits will be Premiership sides come the new season in 2023. We've had some fantastic games here this weekend from the under-19s, London Blitz, who defended their title on Saturday morning. Then we led on to the big one, the Manchester Titans taking down the London Warriors 37-7 in an incredible game. I'm just going to pause for a minute as the bagpipes play. Soak in the atmosphere. Fantastic. So the Manchester Titans took the Brit Bowl title number 34 over the London Warriors last night and then this morning, if you were Wizards from midday, we saw the Highland Stags taking on the Bristol Apache in our first technically international game of the weekend, England versus Scotland. And it was the English team from Bristol who ran out winners of that Division 2 title. And now we see our second international of the weekend. The East Kilbride Pirates, who run towards their sideline, technically the home team in this fixture. And they brought a lot of travelling support with them, as they always do, wherever they play. A storied franchise, synonymous with British-American football, and they're back in the big time. Carl Hopford with it back up to the commentary booth. Carl, great to have uh, Chief... Pete Ackley with you there, and this feels like it's going to be a special one. It does, doesn't it? The atmosphere's building. I'll tell you what, just last night felt great, didn't it, just coming into that game, and this atmosphere's building as well. What the bagpipes? We had two lots of bagpipes, first from the Highland Stags, and now from EKP, that Scottish contingent so well represented here, and don't they bring a flavour and a, a certain ambiance and a certain you know, attitude and personality to these games? It's great to see EKP back in the Premiership, but equally, these Cambridge Chickats, they are a very exciting team. I think we're in for a really good one here. Absolutely, I completely agree. You can see there the officials in the centre of the field as we prepare for the national anthems, and our officials have been fantastic all weekend. Courtesy of BAFRA, the British American Football Referees Association, and today will be no exception. We have referee Keith Wickham in the white hat there in the centre of your screen, who leads Kenneth Glover, Stuart Tabera, Dean Wright, Tim Ockenden, Henry Richardson, Richard Moga, and also Henry Young. And I bring Henry last because what goes around comes around. He was one of my ex-players at the Nottingham Caesars Juniors back in the day. Let's enjoy the national anthems. Those of you who know the British American football community will see the unmistakable figure of Matthew Spoony Davis in the crowd there, ever present with EKP. So fundamental in the development. And now to the English national anthem.
we are almost ready to go here. All that remains is the coin toss, and the captains will join our officiating crew at midfield shortly. I did just mention back judge today, Henry Young. I must mention it again. Great to be involved with the game now in this capacity of, of commentary, but in my coaching days, Coach Henry is a junior up in the, with the Nottingham Caesars Juniors. And it's great to see that not only has he continued in the sport, but he's gone on to support the Zebras and the Bafra crews. So no doubt we'll have a great game from Henry and all the officiating crews as we have done all weekend so far. So Keith Wickham awaits the captains for this one, Carl. Any, any predictions anyway? I mean, we, we had a prediction yesterday for the Manchester-London game, but we got that completely wrong. I can predict the coin toss. Well, I can oh, predict it's whoever be wins a head it. Or a tail. But the, uh, it's interesting on the coin toss, all three of the teams that have won the coin toss have deferred to put their defences out first, and that might be something to do with nerves. But all uh, three of those teams, I'm pretty sure, have also won. So that would be interesting to see how that plays out today during this coin toss. Look at this scene. It's September the 4th we're in North London on we'll call it a late summer afternoon you can't really call it an autumn afternoon yet because the Sun is blazing there is a splattering of clouds around well, quite a lot of cloud cover actually but at the time of kickoff we're gonna be bathed in sunlight and the hopes of both teams are bathed in sunlight at this point in the game because anything is possible and as you mentioned Carl down during our pre-game show this technically is the first premiership game for both these teams yeah, it is. And EKP will have some players that lasted, you know, that the, the legacy of their original premiership run that they did for so many years, almost a decade there in the premiership. As you see them come out now, EKP in black today. They do sometimes play in red and Cambridgeshire in all red. So all black against all red. Uh, but yeah, I mean, EKP know the premiership really well. They'll be familiar with it. Cambridgeshire never been in the premiership. It will be the first time for them. But they have the team and they believe that they can make a difference. Feels a bit like an NFL Thursday night colour rush game, doesn't it? One <laughs> team all in red, the other all in black. Hopefully we'll get some fireworks and colour on the field. Let's hand over to referee Wickham. So if we can't hear from referee Wickham, we will try and talk you through the coin toss. If we do hear him talking, I'll let him carry on and take it away. Obviously, just talking through the teams about expectations and explaining the coin. The visiting team, you get to call. What did you want to call? Tails. What did he say? He did say tails. So the call is made. And it is tails. You've won the toss. I believe you want to defer. Is that right? I'm going to defer. There you, oh. you want to defer? They're going to defer. I guess you're going to receive so the So it appears that the Cambridgeshire Cats yep. have which won the toss from? and as has been the custom, okay, as you right mentioned, Carl, have deferred to the second half, yeah, which means EKP will be the receiving the ball. Have a good game, gentlemen. And now the microphone goes live. There we go. So that's how it is. The Cambridgeshire Cats win the coin toss, choose to defer, which means they will get the ball at the start of the second half. And it is the Pirates offence that we will see take the stage first in this Division 1 Championship game. It's a long way to come for EKP, all the way down from uh, Scotland. And uh, they'll be keen to get their offence out there. I'm sure those nerves have calmed down. They've been here before. And uh, we've seen them warming up. They look very good. They look uh, like a, a big side, good speed, good talent at all those different positions. So it should be a really good game. The 9-1 East Kilbride Pirates taking on the 8-2 Cambridgeshire Cats. Live from New River Stadium here in North London. One loss for the Pirates came against the Northumberland Vikings on the 19th of June. 24-7 on the wrong end of that scoreline. But then they got their revenge in the quarterfinal when they thumped the Vikings 42-6. As far as the Cats are concerned, two losses on their season. First out to the London Hornets on the opening day of the season, the 10th of April. They lost a close 15-13 decision on that one. And then the penultimate game on the 24th of July, losing out to the Wembley Stallions, 21-15. But as with the Pirates, the Cats got their revenge over the Stallions in the quarterfinal. 
35-14 winners before they went on to beat the Hertfordshire Cheetahs, 44-34 in the semi-final. And that leads us beautifully to where we are right now as Michael Johnson, who was mentioned by his head coach, prepares to kick off for the Cats. And standing just inside their own 10-yard line are the returners for the Pirates, one of which is Struan Bailey, number six. Excited, Carl. Really, really excited for this. Yeah, it be a great culmination to a fantastic weekend. And don't they look beautiful down there, those kits all glimmering, all, both in black helmets, but with the differences in terms of those kits, red and black. You can get involved with the show. Use hashtag BritBowl2022 on all socials and let us know what you think. We'll be interested to, uh, to hear your views on this game and anything else that's happened over the BritBowl weekend. So here we go then, Michael Johnson, wide receiver, told to look out for, but obviously doubling up as kicker as well. Let's see whether this one goes to Bailey. And it does head Bailey's way. And Struan Bailey fields in his 10-yard line. Sees what his options are, and he's got a lane straight away. He's out past the 45, into catch territory. He's at the 20, the 10. Touchdown, EKP! No flags! Wow! Blown open right from the off call. Ah, goosebumps already. This crowd's gone crazy. They've travelled a long way. All that pent-up energy on the coach coming down. You have to stay in a hotel room the day before. You get onto the pitch and you just let it go. And that's what EKP have done. Everything they've got on that first play. What a blistering run back. It was a great kick. We'll get to some... More detail on the uh, replay, but there were some fantastic blocks carried in there. 90 yards. 90 yards from Strew and Bailey. And there just seemed so much space. Like you say, Cole, the, the blockers, blocking team on that uh, kick return team for the Pirates. Everybody put a hat on a hat, and that's the result. And before you know it, six zip Pirates. Scott McDonald looking to add the extras. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Seven to zip. Barely time to draw breath. So for each of the previous games, we've had teams winning the coin toss and deferring, and it's worked for them. They've... But not on this occasion. EKP comes straight out of the blocks, full speed, with a touchdown for Struan Bailey, who's a great Britain wide receiver and a Pirates graduate from their junior school. You'll see here. Here's the kick. It's a good kick driven low, Struan takes it and he's always going to the right hand side, look at that key block there as he just picks up and then you'll see the entourage down the field, look at 71 picking off 87 just to give him that key block and that was offensive lineman Angus McIntosh who was absolutely helpful, let it down, down the field, showed some great speed, did 71 to ensure that that was a touchdown now, Struan showed the fireworks to match those as the teams came out of the tunnel at the start of the game. But we already know that Michael Johnson, who's back to return for the Cats, number four, can equally bring some explosiveness to the proceedings. Well, that's one way to get a game going. I hear Caldwell. To kick off number 20 for the Pirates. How do the Cats respond to that? Watch out for Michael Johnson. And it's going to be Johnson that fields it at his 10. And he picks his way through and manages to get out to the 34, 35 yard line. But there is a flag on the play, and we've seen this a couple of times this weekend. There's number 29 for the Cats. Luke Tucker is a little slow to get up off the man that he pins to the ground. Yeah, Michael Johnson's got absolutely blistering pace, and I'm sure that'll play uh, a part in this game. But yeah, all eyes on that penalty now. So block in the back by number 70 during the return. 10 yards, still first down. Mike Lee responsible for the block in the back, which will negate some of that yardage picked up by Johnson. And two plays so far, and neither of them have gone the way of the Caps call. Lobie, you've got to stay with it. It's very, very early on in this final. The Cats will want to just calm down, come out with their game plan. There's no need to change anything yet. 
So our first look this afternoon at quarterback Mark Rivett goes to the air immediately. And who does he get the ball to? He gets it to Michael Johnson who steps and picks up the first first down of the afternoon for the Cats. We've been told to watch him. What do you do to calm everyone down? You move the sticks on first down and you get the ball into the hands of your best player just to calm him down as well and make sure that he's into the game early. To the air again for Rivet. And this time he tucks the ball and runs and he's got real estate in front of him. He picks up at nine yards, eight yards on first down in fact. And the Cats we already know can bring some power and some explosion and they're already showing that on their first two plays from scrimmage. This one's just going to come up a little short, eight-yard gain. Second down. Second and two it is, Rivet to the air again. He looks, he goes to the sideline, he's looking for Johnson again, and it's through Johnson's hands. Tough pass, tough catch, but that one falls incomplete for Rivet. Rivet's had a great season so far, 53% completed passes, over 2,400 yards, passing 32 touchdowns and only six interceptions. So he's having a great season, and a big part of that is that man you see on the screen there, number four, Michael Johnson. Third and a couple. The rivet. Two receivers either side for him, and he's a hard count. This is going to be a free play. Rivet's going to go up top looking for Johnson again. And that is, Johnson has to end up playing DB as the ball's underthrown that time. But that would have been a free play because it did look like EKP jumped offsides. Brody McDonald, captain of that EKP Offside, Pirates defense. Offside, players on the defense. Five yards, it's enough for a first down. Yeah, off, offside D-line, basically. But that is their first, sorry, second first down of the day. First by penalty. And that's just smart playing, isn't it, by the quarterback? Knowing he's got that free play there. Rivet using the cadence of his voice to make yards. First down, Rivet again to the air. Swings it out to the flats and has a man. 24 for the Cats is Mark Womble. And Womble, another man that we were told to look out for. Picks up positive yardage again. Interesting, most teams establish the run to open up the pass. Cats completely flipping that at the moment. And going very, very quickly, aren't they? No huddle, signals coming in. Rivets now signalling to the sideline just to clarify the play. And away they go. Second and six. We saw some similar from the Titans yesterday. As Rivet drops back to pass, now tucks it again, then flings the ball out to the flats again to Womble, and Womble has a first down and more into EKP territory, out of bounds, but the EKP 47. Yeah, we mentioned, Carl, didn't we, yesterday? The Warriors are known for their aggressive defence, but the Titans neutralised that by Bloomfield getting the ball out quickly. This no-huddle offence, not giving the, the, the Warriors time to settle. And that's exactly what they're doing there. EKP brought five men, three down linemen, and then two additional linemen with pressure but if you can get the ball out to your running back then you don't have to worry about it river it to the air again going to the flats again and this time it's just the wrong side of Womble and that one falls incomplete oh, take a breath Carl I know just wish I hadn't had to run up those stairs to be here second and ten river and the cats in good shape found a rhythm early and you can see what this passing attack's done to the EKP defence. Spread out, linebackers three, four yards away from the line of scrimmage. Here comes the motion. And this time it's flipped. On a kind of jet sweep, but the EKP defensive front drift laterally beautifully and wrap that one up. It was Liam Cole, number 47, who's uh, was a played for Sterling Klansman. And he's a rookie player, but he came in and clattered the running back to slow him down initially but now he's hurt himself I think he's damaged his shoulder in that collision so he's the player down on the floor right now to be so Mapufu receiver for the Cats who took that kind of little sort of end around little flip pass type yeah, little shovel thing. isn't it yeah so I think that goes down as a completed pass you have that motion in front of the quarterback like that and you can often deceive because you can then fake that pull it down but they wanted, wanted to run it early. This drive started from the Cats' 10-yard line. They're currently... were into EKP territory. Liam Coyle now making his way to the sideline under his own steam, giving the thumbs up to the coaches. That's so good. hopefully he'll be back on, a rookie player, had a great season. It's good to see 
Griffith now faces a third and long, third and 16 upcoming. You've always had a great season if you're starting as a rookie, I can tell you that. So convention suggests that Rivet will look for Michael Johnson on this one. Johnson lined up in the slot and he does play action. He's looking away this time from Johnson and that's just floats too high out of the grasp of Neil Dempsey. And that'll bring up fourth down and we should see the punting unit come on. Well, EKP do well to slow that momentum down of the Cats. This, this offence reliant on momentum and energy and just keeping moving, keeping moving forwards and not allowing other teams to settle into their own rhythm. They want to dominate and they want to do it at speed. So EKP doing well on this first drive to shut that down. Well, the last time Michael Johnson put his foot to a ball, Strew and Bailey took it back 90 yards for a touchdown. Bailey is back again to receive alongside Andrew McBride, 82. Strew and Bailey, 36 catches, 522 yards, Bad six TDs, and this time Johnson has to roll to his right and just try and get the ball away as best he can, and it goes really high and takes a nice cat's bounce and then checks up and rolls to the 31-yard line, and EKP will be in business starting from there. Yeah, it was a terrible snap for Johnson. Needed to field that one and just uh, took his time, no panic from this player. First time we get to see the EKP offence here at this final game of Brit Ball. Absolutely, well, promising signs from the Cats. They did manage to get something going there. Um, Rivet three out of six on that drive. Didn't see anything from the ground game. As we see Neil Bapti in this spread formation. So EKP look like they're going to go into the air, but then we have motion and the man in the backfield straight away. Let's see how the Cats respond. And Bapti is going to the air. Now he has the roll to his left. Keeps his eyes downfield and he's going up top. He has a man and it's complete inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Gus McIntosh with a big completion from Bapti. It was a lovely little play. They start out by looking like an empty set. Then they roll a bit of motion in, and that means that you got a bit of protection. There was really good protection there for the quarterback, and he just pulled that one deep, took a shot. You've got to take your shots, and EKP are taking their shots early. Andrew McGowan said to me pre-game about the impact that Bapti had had on this outfit as he's going to the end again. Air again, rather. He's going up top, and this time it is just out of the reach of the intended receiver. Let him out of bounds, but Rob Hayes couldn't bring that one in one-handed. Tough with the ball coming out of the sun like that. Flag down on the field. Holding. Offense. 75. 10 yards. Still first down. Craig Robertson. Pinged for holding on that one. But both these teams wanting to put the ball in the air, and that's what we love to see, Cole. Yeah, I mean, haven't, EKP haven't run the ball yet. Neither with the Cats. So here we go then, Sec first and 20 after the holding penalty. And as much as we've been on our feet all weekend, Carl, I'm feeling energised by this start. Bapti this time does go to the ground. Oof! They're running back for the Pirates. Number 30. I think it's Dan Smith there coming in and laying the boom on that first running play that we've seen from scrimmage here you go here's the handoff there and there he is bang oh well it's 40 that turned him back in the hole but it's 79 that came up and made that beautiful hit that was Callum Lang the defensive lineman filling the hole I've unfortunately not got a name for number 30 as a running back for the Pirates we'll try and get that for you as much as we can Bapti with a long second and 20 he's going to the air again and he flips it down the seam and the receiver Hayes does manage to hang on this time and Rob Hayes picks up another EKP first down. Take a look at Rob Hayes that is a stereotypical tight end, big, strong with great hands, watch him as he comes off the left hand side of your line into the seam and there you go and that's the initial hit, breaks through that tackle, breaks through another, keeps those feet driving 
That's what a tight end can do for you if you're a genuine one on your team. Those of you who know me know I'm a Niners fan and he's got the same number and the same attitude as a certain George Kittle. Great work from Rob Hayes. First down, EKP. Bapti back to the ground. Nice work up the seat of the middle as well. And the runner, number 30, once again bounces off two or three cats before he's brought down. But that's going to be another first down for the Scottish outfit. First and goal. They've been running this scheme for years, run option, pass option in uh, East Kilbride. And they run it ever so well. They've got a legacy of great running backs and great quarterbacks that can both run and pass. And they're coming out with a scheme that looks familiar. First and goal. Sorry, Cole. First and goal, Pirates. Baptiste surveys his options once again. Same play as before. Ball up the middle. No signal yet. Still no signal from the officials. Dougie Meekin with the carry. And he is literally half a yard away, Carl. Here's the replay. Yeah, there's just a great run up the middle, burst of speed. And just stretching out is Meekin. He's trying to. Maybe if he'd been an inch taller, he would have got that one. Second and goal from the half-yard mark. Couldn't really get any closer. Here he goes. He can get closer because he can get in. Great deception on the run. And Meekin doubles the score for the Pirates. As long as that extra point can go through. This is what they do ever so well, the Pirates. There's some misdirection in the backfield. They just show you something and then they're very quick hitting. And they've been doing it, as I said on the previous down, for years in East Kilbride. They have a rich tradition of being good at this type of offense. Now, we do have a player down in the end zone. It's going to be a bit of a delay while we sort out that player. It's a Cambridgeshire Cat player. Here's the replay. You can see here... It's just a straight handoff, but what you've got there is you have to respect the fact that the quarterback could keep it on the option, and that takes defenders out of the play. What you didn't see on that replay as well is just the way they seal that end of the line uh, to the EKP Pirates. So well drilled and a great touchdown. I'm sure everybody in the EKP camp expected this. A bit of a sucker punch for the Cats at this stage, still in the first quarter. First opening kickoff went 90 yards in the hands of Strew and Bailey for a touchdown. And the first EKP offensive drive started on their own 31 yard line and is headed 69 yards until it's capped off by the one yard Dougie Meekin touchdown run. The Cats need to bring something soon, Carl, before this one gets away from them. Here's our opening score. Yeah, just to have a quick look at some of the scores that EKP have put up. Watch locking downfield. 71 just he's ahead of the receiver. He's nearly as quick as a the receiver there. But there's just EKP just giving that great entourage down the field for that first score. And then this was the, the great throw down the field and catch that set them up for this second touchdown. And here's the touchdown here on the RPO. Untouched. Perfect execution. Glad to say that Cats player has made his way to the sideline under his own steam. There he is, just getting some attention from our medical crew. And Scott McDonald looks to add the extra point. Not the best snap. Holder does very well to get it down. McDonald gets it up. The extra point is good, and there's also going to be a rough in the kicker penalty on that one, Cole. Yeah, that'll add to the woes of Cambridge, as it will uh, limit the uh, limit the kickoff distance Running and therefore the put them in a bit of a hole. By the defence, the penalty's declined. The score is good. So there we go. Running into the kicker rather than that rough in the kicker. So as a result, rather than attempt, re-attempt the extra point, the Pirates decline. It won't have any particular impact on the Cats' starting field position. But Michael Johnson hopes he will have an impact. 
Now, the average points that the Cambridgeshire Cats given up during the season has been 16 points, and they're already at 14 to EKP. So they're going to want to get their offence into gear. And we've already seen flashes of brilliance from Michael Johnson and others on the uh, Cambridgeshire Cats. Interestingly, Carl, Johnson not back deep to return on this one. We've got Malik Adai and Kayo Dennis back for the Cats. There's Cohill Coldwell. Looks to send this one into the afternoon sky. North London here at the New River Stadium. And that's going to be Dennis, who feels this one inside his own 10, gets out to the 15, past the 20 and up to the 25. And the Cats and Mark Rivett will start their next possession and hopefully eat into this Pirates lead. Let's see if Johnson does retake the field. You're looking for number four for Cambridgeshire. Yeah, I can't see him at the moment, Cole. Which is I didn't see him on the third down and from the previous drive, so we'll keep an eye on that as this game progresses. That will be a major blow to the Cats. Let's see what Rivet and the offence can do in his absence. Play action. Ball over the middle. Lovely, beautifully done by Rivet over the outstretched hand of the linebacker and finds Neil Dempsey for a big gain on first down. So Dempsey was lined up to the bottom of your screen. One of those trips receivers just manages to break free. What Rivets does really well is time the play action with as Dempsey crosses the face of that linebacker and times it to perfection. First and ten, Cats close to midfield. Rivet to the air again, got a man in the middle and he finds him again on a big collision. But holding on to the ball is James Horn. We've got James Horn, number 18, listed as a quarterback here, showing his dual threat ability on the edge there as well. And that's going to be another Cats first down. Finding it difficult, EKP, just to deal with this trips threat. So at the top of your screen, that's where the last two throws have gone. Still no Michael Johnson. Rivet again looks to the flats, then goes up top. And he has a man, and that's well defended. Kerr Stewart knocks the ball away at the last moment. Rivet throwing into double coverage there. There is Michael Johnson, number four on the sideline. Can't really see what he's doing there. It just looked like he uh, is uh, working some kind of ball under his leg by the looks of things. So uh, some sort of injury that Michael Johnson's dealing with right now. Back to the field, Rivet steps up in the pocket, still keeps his eyes downfield, and that looking for flags for a pass interference as the cat sideline is but no flags coming and that's going to be incomplete mark rivet 50 percent of the minute four out of eight so far sometimes an injury like that can galvanize the other players you know great player like that goes off the field you look to yourself and say well it's got to be on me and at the moment the Cats are doing well. Blitz coming. Rivet throws in the direction of the Blitz and finds his man in the flats. Andrew Evans picks up a couple. Sorry, Carl, that's going to bring up fourth down, though. Yeah, Elliot Sorby from his defensive line position was a, an ex-Sterling Klansman as well. Tracks back from defensive line to make the tackle and deny the first down attempt. And already 14 points down, fourth and seven. At the EKP 43 and Rivet and the offence stay on the field. Sense of urgency already in this Division 1 bowl game. Play action, pressure coming and he can't elude that pressure. And down he goes under the weight of Andrew Meekin, number 97. Just waited a bit too long. He had a gap that was available to him to his right hand side, did Mark Rivet. But he just hesitated to take it. I think he still thought there was options down the field. And as a result, it's a turnover on downs. And EKP with a 14-0 lead in the ball. Non-stop action well, in this one, Matt. It's strange, isn't it? Because you wouldn't say worrying times for the Cats, particularly because they're moving the ball very well. But that EKP defence is bending, not breaking. 
And if the offense can do what they've done so far and march down and score again, a three-score lead may be too much. Let's see what happens. Bapti hands off on, on first down. And that's a great open field tackle for a four-yard loss. Number 32 is Clayton Latimer for the Cats. It's a great call by Andrew McGovern, the defensive coordinator, because he stacked the line of scrimmage. He sent players into those gaps expecting that run on first down. And then the running back had to bubble it out and he allowed that linebacker to clear up. Good call by the DC. Uh, with Ben Abbott's DC rather than... Sorry, Ben no, Abbott. That's no right. worries. No worries. Easy to do at this pace. So much to look at as Bapti pitches the ball out to the left this time. See if there's any more daylight there, and there is. But the ball pops loose, and it's still live. But the Pirates recover, and as we've said with other games, when the look's going your way, the look's going your way. Struan Bailey had to track back from his wide receiver position to leap on that football. Struan and Bailey with some really vital contributions so far, opening kickoff for a touchdown and saving a turnover there for the Pirates. But third and six. And the Cats will be wanting to force a punt after this one. This is a key down for the Cambridgeshire Cats. I haven't been able to stop EKP so far. Nobody more than seven yards away from the ball on the Cats sideline, on the Cats field rather, as Bapti goes to the air. Pitts looks for the slant and throws behind his intended receiver. Behind his intended receiver, Fraser McDonald. And that will bring up fourth down. McDonald, a GB wide receiver, you wouldn't expect him to drop the ball. It was definitely catchable, but there were three Cambridgeshire Cats players ready to pounce. So the punt team does come on. Back to return is Dennis, K.O. Dennis. High kick and Dennis is going to just watch that one bounce and hopefully it's going to bounce through the end zone for the Cats. But no, the Pirates are there again and get another break. And EKP, everything going right for them so far as they're down it inside the 10, just outside the five. First down, Cats at their six-yard line. Still no Michael Johnson back on the field, still nursing that injury, just to give you a sense of why he's so important. He had 55 catches over 1,000 yards, averaged 19.5 per catch and 12 touchdowns, the longest of which was 91 yards. So Michael Johnson was a key part of this offense, but they're going to have to do it without him. And they're going to have to drive 94 yards to try and half this lead on first down, run up the middle. Twenty-four on the carry that time. Is Mark Womble once again? Perfect conditions. Perfect conditions on the field. Pretty good conditions up in the commentary booth as well. As Rivet hits his man in the flat there on a quick out. And Neil Dempsey, the recipient of that latest rivet pass. He's moving the ball around a lot, isn't he, Rivet? Get it to these different wide receivers that he's got. And that's exactly what you need to do. Big third down play, but there is a flag on the play. Let's hear from our referee, Keith Wickham. Just as they decide... Uh, talking to EKP to decide what they want to do, and here is referee Wickham. Holding by the offence, centre. Half the distance, second down. And the Cats just can't catch a break at the moment. So second and eight after the hold. I suppose if you're going to get called for holding, this is as good a place as any, because you can only go off the distance back, call. Yeah, it's just so stressful for an offence to be trying to operate on their two-yard line. Yeah, so second and seven becomes second and 12. Gives choices to that defense. Let's see whether they send some pressure. Oh, and that's, is that gonna be 
a false start again. Saw a lot of the Pirates move. But were they drawn by the right-hand side of that line? False start. The pirate. Offense, 68. Half the distance, remain second down. Wow, just keep going, keep going, just keep backing them up. A.D. Quirrell, number 68, guilty of that false start. Pirates only got three men on the uh, defensive line there, but what they're doing is they're in two-point stances and they're moving around, and it always throws an offense off, especially when they're under pressure already because they don't want to make a mistake. Marks. Now they come with four guys on the defensive line. And Mark Stewart is one of them, linebacker number 50. And is that going to be, they're going to say his forward momentum was stopped outside the goal line. So that's not a safety. But what it does mean is it's third and 14 from about the one foot line where that ball's placed. So if you're new to the game, a safety basically, if you're an offensive player and you're tackled inside your own end zone, and that is a safety. The defence will get two points, and the offence would then kick the ball back to you. So not only do you score two points, but you also gain possession. Rivet now looking to try and avoid that outcome, and it's going to be very close as to whether he has done or not, as he's met on the goal line by a bunch of pirates. But actually... He's been ripped loose by the looks of things. And that is a touchdown! That is an EKP touchdown. And I called his name a couple of minutes ago. Mark Stewart, leader in sacks and tackles... And he turns up with what could be a nail early on in this D1 final, Carl. Wow, I mean, that was an incredible play by the Pirates. That Rivet just spending too much time in his own end zone. They're going to have a, we'll have a look at it now. There's Rivet. Look, he's, there's a little gap to his left hand side. He goes for that gap, and there's number 50 of EKP. Now, watch him stand him up, then shove your arm in there and just rip that ball loose. What a fantastic play! by Mark Stewart, who's uh, played in Potsdam in 2019. But we will get this play looked at again because it is under review. Now, the only thing they could be looking at here, Matt, is whether there was an inadvertent whistle or something which blew the play dead, because it did seem to last a long time with no progress. But I think it's going to stand. And if it does, it's just a really great heads-up play from Mark Stewart. I suppose, again, like you say here, is that replay. Mark Stewart there in the middle of the line. Now, you can't hear the sound on this. Obviously, you can't hear whether that whistle was blown. But I didn't hear a whistle from up here. I think they're just having a look to see whether the forward progress was stopped. Yeah. Or whether or not, you know, that was a legitimate... It took the time for that play to develop and for that touchdown to occur. See if we can see. Nice close-up on Rivet here. <laughs> so, like you say, holds on to the ball a little long. Now, clears. Now is his, pro is his progress stopped there? And then you can see Stewart here rolling away and scoots his way into the end zone. That it's great camera work. What you, I mean, it's, it's, you wouldn't stop that play, would you? Because the Cats' offensive line are coming in from behind and trying to get additional yards from Rivets. And you also got the pressure of that potentially being a safety. So you want to give the quarterback a chance to get out if he can. But EKP, just they, they just come heads up football all the way through, haven't they? Like they were ready to go 100% just from kickoff, and that is such a great play. The play is being reviewed for progress and for potential personal foul. If they can uphold this call, that'll be the trifecta for EKP. Special teams TD, offensive TD, defensive TD, all in the first quarter. Yeah, you can see the uh, our review officials looking at it. Great camera work here from our onside production crew to give us these looks. Now, where's, where's the, the personal, personal foul? foul? I'm not seeing anything on there. I am seeing a great play by that uh, ex-Sterling Klansman defensive lineman, Mark Stewart. That's what I'm seeing. Mm. Like you say, has that progress stopped? I don't know, because I agree with you about giving the opportunity for the offensive line to push the quarterback the review, out of the end zone. Here we go. There was no personal foul. However... The runner's progress was stopped at the one-yard line before the ball was stripped. It will be fourth down there to Cambridge. So there you go. Take the touchdown off the board. But fourth down and a mile wow. on your own one-yard line. 
EKP bringing the pressure on this one, Carl? Yeah, I'm feeling like the crowd here. I've got mixed feelings about that call because it was such a great defensive call. I and agree. there was no whistle, so you don't stop playing. However, you know, that forward progress was stopped. That's what they're saying. And it gives the Cats a break. And I guess if you're a neutral, it means that, you know, the Cats are not going to go down by three scores. But uh, I thought Mark Stewart, that was a heads-up play. I agree. Feel a bit hard done by there if I'm head coach. Andrew McGowan for EKP. But still an opportunity because there's not a lot of room for the punter to stand. Need to watch where his feet are on that back line. Because if he does step out, that will result in a safety as well. And as I mentioned before, that would be two points to EKP. And the Cats would have to then kick the ball back. But he does manage to get the punt away. It's a good punt. It lands at the 40. And then Struan Bailey picks it up at speed. Gets down to the 20. And the EKP are in business again, Cole. It's damage limitation for the Cats on that kick. Struan gets a nice friendly bounce. Steps under it. We've already seen his blistering pace. So EKP will take over. They didn't get the touchdown, but they've got fantastic field position here, starting from their own, sorry, from the Cats 20. It is indeed the case. Three possessions for the Cats. One punt, one turnover on downs, and then a second punt after a three and out. EKP, make no mistake about it. They're here to put their marker down and warn the Prem that they're back. Bapti to the air. In and out of the hands of Rob Hayes. Flag on the play, though, again. Rob Hayes not only playing that tight end position, but playing D-line as well alongside Mark Stewart. You may have seen number 85 up there with him. Ball is a ball up. Get him playing both ways if it helps your team. Here's the replay on that. man downfield, number 55 on the offence. Five yards, remains first down. So that was... Uh, so number 75, I'm hearing, rather than 55. So Craig Robertson there straight downfield a little bit. Too far for an offensive lineman. Marches the Pirates back five yards. Well, so far what we've seen from EKP is it will won't put them off that much, particularly with a 14-point lead. And that's going to be a free play for Bapti as flags come flying and Bapti goes up top. Looking for Strew and Bailey again, who's almost sandwiched between two cats. And that one falls incomplete, but again, Offside, that'll be a free play. Defence, multiple players, five yards, still first down. And just as Rivet used his, used his uh, brain earlier on when he knew there was an offside, got a free play. Bapti does the same thing. Throw it up for grabs. Even if it's incomplete, uh, sorry, even if it's intercepted, the flag will negate it. So here we go then, first and ten after the five-yard addition for the encroachment. He's in motion to give Bapti trips on the left-hand side. Empty backfield. He goes out to the left. And he finds a receiver who cuts his way in field, remains on his feet inside the 10. And he's still on his feet, cannot be dragged down. And now the big linemen come to push the pile. And back he goes. But that is going to be a first down again. First and goal. As Fraser McDonald hauls that one in. He's a GB wide receiver and showing his strength and power and height and size. One thing you can guarantee whenever you play EKP is they will come with a lot of attitude and they will come with a willingness just to squeeze everything they can out of every single play and they will play to the whistle. They won't quit and uh, that's what we're seeing from EKP on every single down. So maybe now we are Approaching worrying times for the Cats, particularly if EKP can convert here and untouched goes that running back of no name, number 30, EKP. 20 points to zero. 
run the same play again and it's got the same result and one of the key parts of this play as you see watch number six Drew and Bailey come in and seal the edge that's a crack back block then they pull 71 and 30 goes in untouched but the blocking of Stu and Bailey on that play was uh, just incredible and that is what seals the edge Stu and Bailey making a tremendous impact on this game early on he's also the holder you can see him there holding the kick already got a touchdown of his own through the kick return and also a great blocker Scott McDonald with the attempt and Bailey manages to snag that one get it down and McDonald kicks it through Ooh, and the Cats losing their cool Frustration setting in already. And we're still in the first quarter. That's really the only saving grace for the Cats at the minute is there's so much of this game left. Yeah, Q1, three scores down. A lot of people thought the Cats would be up in their own right coming into this game. I kind of like the fact that the referees didn't throw a flag on that one. You know, it's a little bit of frustrations, a little bit of afters. But uh, no harm done. They will have to just keep an eye on that as the game progresses but it's the first little touchy moment we've had still no sign of Michael Johnson you've got to think Carl haven't you that at 21 to 0 down if Michael Johnson was able to play at all he'd be in there giving his all to the last so it's a, a tad worrying for the Cats that their main weapon already seems to be sidelined So here we go again then. Andrew White Oak. <laughs> Fielded this kick inside the 10. And it's Dennis who gets out to the 35 and stays on his peak up to the 40, spins away to the 45, out to midfield where he's dragged down inside EKP territory, but there are two flags down. So you'd think this kick has been coming back. I mentioned earlier on about Matthew Spoonie Davis being with us, and he's uh, saved a little bit. We have an update for you on that running back call. Yeah, number 30 is uh, a running back called Greg Black, and it's good to have his name. So uh, the return, a hold. 31 by the returning team, 10 yards from the flag, first down. You can see the holds going in there from Cambridge but it's still a great run back and that well, should breathe a little bit of life maybe into this team because they've got something to cheer about but yeah number 30 Greg Black already with two scores on the board great to know that Spoonie's presence is felt and he can contribute as he always did so fantastically well. Great to see him here. So here we go then with Rivet. And the Cats. First down, Rivet back to the air again. Looks down and that's way over the head of Mapofu. Going to have to take some chances of the Cats. But you also need to know that you know you've got three quarters left. You don't need to move entirely away from your game plan. You can come back in incremental steps. So taking big risks with the ball, not recommended. Stewart timed his blitz perfection there that time, straight up the middle. Just didn't give River any opportunity. And that's going to be recorded as a sack and bring up third and 11. That will help soothe the wounds of not getting that touchdown. And here is third and 11. You really feel the Cats need to convert here just to stem the tide a little bit of this black wave from north of the border to the air again, Rivet. And he has to step up and he puts the ball up, but that's absolutely miscommunication between Rivet and Neil Dempsey. Neil Dempsey curled back in the middle of the field. And Rivet threw it as if Dempsey should have gone straight down the seam on a vertical route. Rivet just had to get rid of that ball. The pressure was coming. Another split second. And it, that ball would have been knocked out of his hands. Three. 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 
So fourth down. Three scores on the board. One special team kick return right from the opening play that set the tone. Then Meekin rushing in from close range. And finally, Greg Black taking the score to what we have now. As that punt goes in favour of the Cats. And for the first time today, they do get a lucky roll. EKP will take over on their 25-yard line. This is the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of a quarter that the Cats will want to forget as quickly as they possibly can. As the score here at New River Stadium is the East Kilbride Pirates 21, the Cambridgeshire Cats 0. What are you doing, Carl, if you're coach Andrew, sorry, coach uh, Andy White Oak for the Cats now? Stay calm. You're reminding your team of who they are and you're reminding them of why they got here. And you're also giving them a little bit of a push on defence and saying, look, you've got to get this team off the field. We have to give our offence as many chances as we can now. So get your job done, make it clean and get off the field. Bapti, quarterback once again, two receivers either side, that the ball is handed off on first down. It's not though, because that's a great bit of deception by Bapti. Pulled that ball at the last second as he saw the D-end crashing down on the running back, and Bapti scampers for a first down of his own. It's that run option, and when a team is running effectively with the running backs of you know, Meekin and Greg Black, then your eyes are on them. You don't think of the QB, and all of a sudden, QB in acres of his own space. Injury on the field to uh, offensive lineman 77, which is Brian Laidlaw. This one could get out of hand quickly here. Here's that uh, option play call. I just watch him hold it in the stomach there and then pull it. The last minute, everyone bites, and that gives quarterback a great opportunity just to get to the edge. Uh, Neil Bapti, captain of this offense, obviously, but also just great with his hands. Great example of anyone, any young quarterbacks looking and watching this, how to execute that play. You notice Bapti's head was up all the time, ball was in, but even though the ball was in, he wasn't looking at the ball, he was keen on the D end. When he saw that D end, Callum Lang. Crash down on his halfback. He knew that they'd got that outside zone, that end position, all to himself to be able to run into, and he scampers for a first down. And when I say that they've been doing that for years in EKP, what I mean is that to, to get it that good, to make sure that the exchanges at the mesh point are so finessed in the way that they are, takes rep after rep after rep after rep, so that the running backs and the quarterbacks understand the body language of communication that you're giving to each other if you're either going to retain the ball as a QB or give it as a runner. It's not something you can just install overnight, and they've been doing it for years in East Kilbride. EKP's Brian Laidlaw being helped off the field there, number 77. Means the Pirates O-line will have to switch things up. Maybe the Cats can exploit that. New lineman coming into the game. And I'm sure EKP have contingency plans in place as Bapti once again pulls the ball down and now he is in trouble and he just puts that ball on the deck. Looks like they were trying to set up a little screen there. But the Cats defensive front got to him quicker than he anticipated. They had the right play called. The Cats bring six, four defensive line and an additional two linebackers. But as you say, Matt, they just... Uh, and big number 99 from the Cats, who's Ryan Wilson, in the QB's face before he had a chance. Cats just making a substitution here. Being allowed to do so, make sure balance numbers up. EKP second and 10. They're in 44, back to the air again. 
Steps up, fakes the pass, steps up, and then he's slung to the ground. And that's Ben Bailey with the sack. Nice play by the Cats, and they needed it there on third down. So yeah, it does bring up third down and 13 now. One more play for the Cats to get these Pirates off the field. Ben Bailey on that sack is the uh, Cats' leading tackler. 72 solo tackles this season already, making his mark felt early on. Here is third and long then. Look for Bapti to go to the air again. There's a flag and the play is blown dead. Which suggests this one is going to be either a false start or an encroachment. False start, offence, not all 11 players set. Five yards, still third down. And Bapti a little eager that time to get that play underway before his players were all set. So third and 13 becomes third and 18. three scores ahead you don't really want to put the ball up in the air on this one just uh, take what's given to you get a good punt let your defense defend this is an ideal, ideal time to run either a draw a screen or a little jailbreak screen out to Strew and Bailey who can bust this loose and that's right in front of our common true petition and I think he's just shy of the first down as one of the cats goes down on the near sideline as well, but Strew and Bailey showing his electricity. And in fact, it's three yards short. Injury timeout once again. A lot of the players called have told me how fantastic this service is, and you yourself, obviously, in terms of it being a, a 4G facility, but there does seem to be a lot of these lower leg injuries cropping up, and it's, it's this debate about this surface as opposed to grass surfaces and whether or not there's not enough give still on these 4G artificial surfaces. You have a take on that, particularly as a coach? I think you've got to get your footwear right. We've seen, you know, you see sometimes with players come and they just don't, because they don't play on 4G surfaces, you're used to playing on grass, sometimes you get your footwear wrong. You know, if, you have, if your studs are too long, then you're going to slide about, but if they're too short, your foot may stick. There are different kind of things to take into consideration when you play on a 4G surface. But I wouldn't necessarily start saying you know, it's causing you know, lower leg injuries or those sorts of things. I know that they're, they're very fast surfaces and they tend to favor fast players. You can see here, this is the collision between two players at the, on your screen here. And you can see how the injury was caused. There is the collision. And that put 32 down, and he went down clutching his knee. This is the type of play that you get from East Kilbride. They come in, and they will play to the whistle. They're not illegal shots, but whenever we've... I used to go up and play East Kilbride back in my playing days, and you would take shots like that right at the end of the play. And it's to kind of let you know that they're there. And, it, you know, if the play had progressed, that they would have had you in the block. They're not illegal shots, and I never felt that about EKB. I never felt they were a dirty team. But, they, by God, they play to the whistle, and they play hard. It just keeps you thinking, doesn't it? Keeps your head on a swivel then. And if you're thinking about that, then some, maybe something else you're not thinking about, which can, they can then exploit as an offence. Daniel, no, sorry, Clayton Latimer is the Cats player carried off there from the sideline, and we wish him all the best. Number 32 there in the centre of your screen, who will receive attention now from the medics. And it is fourth down, and the special teams unit for the Pirates come on. Fourth and three. So the Cats successfully stifled that latest Pirates attack. In fact, some confusion from EKP to the point where they have to burn a timeout. Special teams didn't come on. It was still Neil Bapti on there as quarterback. At 12.42, 12.42, First time out, East Kilbride. So still 12 minutes 42 left in this second period, Cole. Plenty of time for both teams. But Cambridgeshire really suffering now. They've got that key injury to their receiver, Michael Johnson. 
They've now suffered a, an injury to one of their key defensive players, number 32. Clayton Latimer. Yeah, who's uh, was on defence that time, was listed as a running back. So you just you wonder about the resilience of Cambridge here. It's been a long season. They're playing a very tough team. A team that will definitely take you on. A team that will deliver a big hit. And Scott McDonald on then to punt on fourth and two, we think. And indeed, he puts his foot through the ball. The ball spirals and pitches inside the 30. Rolls down inside the 20 and it'll come to rest at the 19-yard line. So the Cats, what can they do? Second quarter underway. Plenty of time for them to come back in this one. Don't really need to change the game plan. There is enough time. They don't need to do anything silly. But they do need to get a sustained drive together in EKP territory. See if Rivet can get anything going on first down. Ball handed off on first down. Tiptoes his way back to the line of scrimmage. But no further. That's Mark Womble once again. Mark Stewart again with the play for EKP. He's really been impressive early on. We're going to the running game now, and in early doors, Rivet was being successful through the air. And that big defensive front of the Pirates, as Rivet does drop back to pass this time, steps up, puts the ball over the top, and that's going to be just out of the reach of everybody. Intended receiver was James Horn. That brings straight away a third and long passing situation. Nothing else. They need to give the defence a bit of a rest, don't they? Yeah, again, they're behind the sticks. They only get that very short gain on first down. They're incomplete on second. Third and nine already. And you've hardly taken the field. You can feel the wind's gone out of this stadium a little bit. From the electric start that we had and the pre-game festivities, the Pirates will be sitting pretty and really pleased with how they've started. A little reverse, end around reverse, which doesn't really fool anybody to start with. But then it's Ryan Miller who comes in and scythes down the runner. A bit of trickery there from the Cats, but the Pirates wise to it. You have a player that stays at home and plays that backside just in case there's a reverse, and every play that goes away from you there'll be a backside player that stays at home and it's just good discipline on a, on a defense to have somebody who's going to turn back those reverses or those counters or those bootleg plays and on that play he's called bribe play absolutely right that player needs to turn back inside and it means that coyote dennis has nowhere to go not great reading for the first five series for the cats the kick is away but the play is whistled dead own 10-yard line, punt. Own 25-yard line, turnover on downs. Own 6-yard line, 3 and out. Own 28-yard line, 3 and out. Own 19-yard line, 3 and out. And now to make things worse, it looks like the punter put his knee down before he kicked the ball away. Yeah, we could see this on replay, but oh, what a huge mistake from the Cats. Hunter, he's trying to talk to the referee and say he didn't actually do that. But what that does do, as you can see on the screen, gives EKP the ball at the 13-yard line against the tired defence. This could spell trouble once again. Bapti hands the ball off to Black. Black bounces outside to the right, tries to hurdle the man and gets upended at the 10. Good hustle from the Cats. Malika Dai coming up to make the tackle on Black. Picks up three yards. Black just really patient on that play, just almost hovering behind those offensive linemen, waiting to see which way the, the gap's going to break. And out to his right-hand side. Adai did a really nice job of knifing through all that confusion and finding the runner. 
in comparison the EKP drives first drive opening kick return 90 yards for a touchdown second drive own 31 ended in a one yard rushing touchdown third drive three and out fourth drive own 21 ending in a three yard Greg Black rushing touchdown fourth drive punt and then we are currently on their fifth drive at the start from the 13 Bapti hands off no ball's out and the ball is out and the Cats do catch a break first fumble first turnover for the Pirates which breathe life into the Cambridge Cats there's me saying the EKP has been doing this for years, uh, advanced in the mesh point. And they go, um, fluff it up, commentator's curse. That's what can happen on that read option is you just hold the ball a little too long. Quarterback thinks the running back's got it. Running back thinks the quarterback's going to keep it. And it's just a miscommunication, a non-verbal communication between QB and running back. And the ball just ends up on the ground. The Cats get a break and they need it if they're going to mount any kind of comeback in this game. They do get a break, but they've still got 90 yards to contend with. Rivet throws it out nice and quickly out of his hands. And the receiver picks up a yard. Teo Dennis, completion, positive yardage, getting it out of Rivet's hands quickly. Well, in fact, picks up nearly three yards, so positive, second and seven. This is where they've struggled on second down. They haven't been able to pick up anything or they're going backwards. Let's see if they can improve the yards to pick up for second down. As the sun begins to drop here at New River Stadium, Rivet goes again to the air and the ball is caught. Obviously caught on his knees. And without Michael Johnson, Kayo Dennis becomes the featured receiver. Dennis picks up a further five to bring up third and two. It's the game plan so far for the Cats is, you know, run on first, pass on second, and then see what we've got left. And on this set of downs, they did a lot better with that second down pass. Another big third down going up top and does have a man. And that's a fantastic reception. What a grabbing traffic that is. Take a bow, James Horn, and what a fantastic pass downfield by Mark Rivett to spark the Cats light, sideline to life. Well, he's their backup quarterback. But when you've got a man down, as Michael Johnson is, it's all hands to the pump. And this is how to do it. Over the shoulder, look at the blow and people hanging on to his neck. Great play by James Horn to breathe life into the Cats. Straight back to live action, Rivett again. Oh, really good catch and did very well to hold on after a... A blow from Connor Zahariev. That's Andrew Evans with the reception. Gets immediately hit but holds on to the ball. Couple of yards on first down and every yard counts right now for the Cats. We saw this similar yesterday as Manchester went 21-0 to zero ahead. And then the Warriors scored just before half-time, 21-7. As Rivet goes to the end again and that's aimed for Dennis but low and away. Not the greatest pitch he's ever going to throw. Currently 10 out of 18 is Rivet. Two out of five, Bapti. Third down, big third down again on third and eight. Cats look as the pressure comes up the middle and Rivet flicks it. Oh! Promising so much that drive, but that ball goes in and out of the hands of Andrew Evans. And even oh, if he had yeah. caught that, he caught it with his knees down again, Carl, and it would have been progress stop there. Well, the, the ball was low. They had exactly the right play called. You know, EKP came with what they expected, which was a six-man blitz. Everything was set up. Ball too low and can't make the catch. So this is the story of uh, the Cats so far. And it looks like they're going to have to punt again. Fifth punt of the day upcoming for the Cats. And it's a good one. It's a high hanging one. Fielded at the 20. It's that man again, Strew and Bailey, looking for his second kick return score of the afternoon. Gets out past the 35 to the 36. Been so impressed with Bailey. 
I mean, he's a GB wide receiver, so you would be impressed, but uh, so confident on these pump returns. You know, he knows when to let it bounce, and he knows when to come up, take the catch, and when he takes the catch, he's very assured. You get none of that feeling of anxiety that you do with some of these returners on the punts, you know, where they haven't had those reps in. He's a, a really good player, is uh, Bailey. Also makes a difference on those blocking for those uh, running touchdowns as well. That tee back on the field for the Pirates. And he pitches it this out to Meekin. And Meekin, lovely juking, jinking run, stepping outside, then back inside. And before you know it, he's chewed up seven yards on first down. But needs to come off as Black takes his place. Seven minutes to go in the half. And the Pirates are rolling again. Once again, those cats, the cats offense didn't really give the cats defense a lot of time to get a breather as uh, Greg Black goes round right end and he's clear into cats territory for another EKP first down. You could hear that collision all the way up here. Just play comes to a dead stop, but Black doesn't go down, dishes the blow out, just steps calmly out of the sideline. Some vicious hits going on here from both teams. It's great football call. Like you say, for the neutral, maybe a little one side of it, 21 nil down, and uh, we are neutral. Just want to see a, a real good contest, which for all intents and purposes, we are apart from on the scoreboard as Bapti again looks to the air. It's number 89 who puts a move on his defender and he's still on his feet at the 20, at the 10, and he's into the touchdown, but there is a flag on the play. Nice move by Fraser McDonald. Long tall rangy runner but I think this one's coming back and it's probably for an illegal block call yeah again another GB receiver they've got Bailey and they've got McDonald both those GB receivers making a difference McDonald will be frustrated if this comes back 30 catches 334 yards and four TDs on the season for McDonald Long First foul four. blindside block by the offense during the advance 15 yards from the flag now, this is the borderline stuff I was talking about. You know, the, some of the stuff that comes in, you'll see it here. So you're looking top of your Black screen, Fraser McDonald. The penalty, and it will be a first There's the down. turn, and then just speed. Now, watch for the block coming in on number five. There it is. That's the blindside block. And, uh, you know, that's a good call because uh, essentially it's a defenceless player. Can't do that anymore. Could do once upon a time, but no more. So McDonald's. 40-odd yard touchdown reception is wiped off the board. Back to live action. First and eight. After the penalty, Baptiste straight back to the air and he drops back and he has time and he finds the same man. No, it's number 86. My mistake. Confused a six for a nine. That's Craig Black with the reception for another first down. Craig Black, Craig Black, brothers on this team, both making an impact. Baptiste at 50%. Three out of six so far. Sixth first down of the afternoon for the Pirates. And they're rolling again. They've got threats all over the field from McDonald to Black to Black in the backfield to this man, Struan Bailey, on a little jailbreak screen once again. He's inside the 20. He's still on his feet and he scoots through. No flags. Touchdown, Pirates! Struan Bailey's second touchdown of the afternoon. And guess who was there to make sure he got into the end zone? Angus McIntosh, the defensive lineman, number 71. I mean, I don't know whether Angus and Struan go out drinking together and having a bit of pizza and watching the football, but they should do. Those two are a fantastic double act. And uh, McIntosh does a fantastic job just escorting his wide receiver into the end zone. Second. Tremendous speed, McIntosh. has been so impressed on the kick kickoff, and he's always out there in front of Bailey to ensure that the score can be made. Second touchdown of the afternoon for Strew and Bailey, who now turns to Holder. Does that job as well as he's done his receiving job and kick return job so far. 
And the East Kilbride Pirates ominously go ahead 28 to 0 over the Cambridgeshire Cats. Here's that touchdown again. Watch a bottom of your screen, jailbreak screen, and watch 71. There's McIntosh. Now watch how Bailey just follows him through one block, two block, three block, and it's just easy if you've got great blocking. Well, that's textbook. And, and look at the two yeah. of them celebrating the back of the end zone. Well, Fantastic. The way Bailey points to him when he turns around, that's all on you. That's you, my friend. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the ride into the end zone. Again, executed perfectly. And lovely to be able to call an O lineman when you recognize something they're doing well. Never get the credit they deserve, the guys in the trenches. D line often get notified when they're tackling for losses and dragging down quarterbacks, but those O line unfortunately only get recognized if they're false starting or holding. So the fact that we can recognize some exceptional blocking play, which sprang Strew and Bailey for that touchdown, love it, Cole. You wonder whether Cambridge here are just running out of answers to the questions that EKP are asking them. Well, they're going to have to find some if they've got any chance. And even the turf isn't on the cat side. There's 87, Malik Adai slips as he tries to make a cut. The sun reappears behind this early evening sky here. It's a sunbathed New River Stadium in North London. The sun in the eyes of the Pirates now, and maybe that will help the Cats towards the end of this second period. Because goodness me, they need something to kickstart them. I mean, if you just looked at the stats, the Cambridgeshire quarterback's playing well, but it's just not being reflected in any points. First down, handoff. Good run on first down. Picks up four. Can I be controversial? I believe you can, Matt. Have, has the East Kilbride season prepared them better for Premiership football in the division they've been in as opposed to the Cambridge Cats season? question let's come back to it look at that defense not one ball nowhere to go dragged down for a loss of three on second down Andrew Meekin again coming in just knifing through that offensive line there are probably people screaming at me from the SFC one East saying no no we're a really strong division and probably people screaming at me from the NFC one North yeah, we're tough up north. Third and eight. Cats need a conversion desperately here to give the defence a rest, but also give them... Any oh! Guess who? Guess who? Mark Stewart. Well, played for Potsdam in 2019. He was an ex-Sterling Klansman. You can see the quality of this. Look, I oh, just need a little bit of thinking time to bam. Oh, no, you're going to get no thinking time. Clean hit. Stewart takes one to the ground. They're going to check him out. Wow. When it's not your day, it's not your day. And the worst thing about that was obviously he tried to palm the ball back into him. So he was fully focused on that football. Well, Coyote Dennis could do absolutely nothing about that and he's trying to do his job which is as a wide receiver yeah. try and catch that football his full concentration on the ball nothing dirty about that hit at all that is American football but I really hope Coyote Dennis is okay because he was doing his job and I think if that hadn't have been that intervention from uh, the mighty Mark Stewart then he would have caught that football he was obviously Coyote Dennis the new go-to guy in the absence of Michael Johnson, who we've not seen since the opening series in the first quarter for the Cats. There was a little bit of concern on the field for Dennis. Yeah, it was a jarring hit, and you can see the impact that that had to his neck and head area. And any time that happens, you've got to be really, really careful to make sure that the player is OK as the EKP players will come over 
and support Coyote Dennis. Oh, I love that. Look at look at that. EKP there shielding the injured player from the sideline. You can't see on our screen and we wouldn't bring you footage of an injury, but if you just talk you through what's going on while Dennis is receiving attention on the field, the cat's on one side for their sideline, creating a wall so that they can't be seen from the far side. And EKP run over and do exactly the same thing, turning their back to the injured Dennis so he can get the medical attention and privacy he deserves. And the whole pirate sideline standing respectfully as Mark Stewart runs back out to join his teammates. Just want to confirm that Cody Dennis did go down, but there was movement prior to him going down. And the clapping is always a good sign. As EKP and the Cambridgeshire Cats show this solidarity towards Coyote Dennis. And this is unfortunately the nature of this sport from time to time. You enter into it, you know the risks. But we never like to see this happen to anybody. So, Carl, just for a moment then while we've got this break in play. This one is in the control of the East Kilbride Pirates at the moment. But uh, a great weekend of football that we've had so far. We saw the under-19 final between the London Blitz and the Tamworth Phoenix. And the London Blitz shut out the Phoenix to retain their national under-19 championship. Then yesterday, the big one, the Manchester Titans put in the most complete performance we've seen for a long time. It's fantastic to see Coyote Dennis makes his way unaided off the field. Great news for everyone you can see in the screen there. And he's waving all the medical attention off and yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm all right, I'm all right. Yeah, OK, but we just want to check, particularly with such an emphasis on concussions at the moment in our sport across the globe. Then this morning, the Highland Stags took on the Bristol Apache found them just a bridge too far as the Apache ran out champions of Division 2 and now here we have the Division 1 final with the East Kilbride Pirates showing their force so far in a 28-0 lead still before half-time Cole great to see Dennis back on his feet absolutely he'll want to get straight back into the action by the looks of things but we've got to make sure he's checked out fourth down Cats have got a punt after that play by Stewart and there we go, the kick is up, and it's a good punt again. And it's muffed in the sunlight, and the Cats have a chance here to recover. But guess who's there again to make a vital interjection? Struan Bailey. Kick return, touchdown, receiving touchdown, fumble recovery. My mistake, number seven, wasn't it, Cole? No. Jordan McSorley, number 23 on the recovery. Sorry, Cole. Getting excited. Uh, Bailey was definitely around thereabouts, but I think it was McSorley that picked that one up. So quick, the Pirates, to make sure that they're even, you know, damage limitation, make sure you get on the ball if it does get bobbled like that. So EKP fully in control, 28 nothing, making plays on offence, defence and on special teams and making sure they retain the ball, 28 nothing up. Drive number eight, and look, EKP with an empty backfield, four receivers to the right, Carl, and the motion... Meekin to the left, and there's that jailbreak screen that they scored on prior. And Struan Bailey's got room in front of him again, and he's on his feet at the 30. Picked up a first down and smashed down at the 33-yard line. No remorse by these Pirates, piling on the misery. Yeah, another first down. Here's the design of that play. Here comes McIntosh as well, number 71. You can see Bailey getting great blocking as well from 86, his receivers... 85 coming in the tight end. There's another block from 86. Now, where's McIntosh? McIntosh is actually 10 yards in front of Bailey. He's in the end zone celebrating. Great work again from the offensive line of the Pirates. Ball handed off this time. Megan with the carry. Steps out of a tackle. Straight down the middle. Lowers the boom. Gets past the 40. Past the 45. Two yards short of midfield. And Dougie Meekin. Balancing power and precision and speed in that run. Another first down, Pirates. Unstoppable at the moment, Cole. Team from north of the border. 
Single safety back for the Cats, putting everyone in the box. Play action this time. Over the top, in and out of the hands of Rob Hayes. And if I'm being critical of Bapti, and he knows it, that ball, yeah, Rob Hayes points. No, I wanted it in the middle, seam down the middle. Don't put it on my outside shoulder, Neil. But can't be too critical of Neil Bapti. This Bapti. is the two-minute warning. Two minutes, two minutes. Neil Bapti orchestrated this offence perfectly. A nice balance between pass and run opened up for the first and second drive. Largely in the air. And then we've come back to the running of Meekin and Black. Second and ten at the two-minute warning. Empty backfield once again. So Baptiste going to the air and in and out of the hands and it's intercepted. And this could be a lifeline for the Cats. Number 44 steps inside, stays on his feet. And Baptiste picked off for the first time by Mikey McLaughlin. And McLaughlin very close to putting his knee down. But listen to this crowd here. The Cambridgeshire Cats support goes wild. A little bit of hope at the end of this first half. I don't know if Mikey McLaughlin's Scottish. But if he is, and he just got one over on his kinsman. Because that's a great pick over everyone's heads. And he's right there and he makes the most of this. Cuts back inside. Wants to get as much yards as he can. It's two wide receivers needing to combine to bring him down. And the Cats are going to call a timeout. Less than two minutes to go. See if they can do something just before the end of this half. Well, Baptiste's first real mistake. 147, 147, first time out, Cambridge. Yeah, Baptiste's first real mistake there. Saw signs of it as on a previous play he missed Rob Hayes throwing the wrong side of the seam. And Hayes showed his displeasure there. But now Rivet in the offence have a real chance to go into half-time with their heads held high. Not really been in this one at all until that McLaughlin interception. McLaughlin's had four interceptions up to this point for 41 yards. Rivet to the air. Pressure coming. Got a man inside the 10. First down, Cats. And that's yet to be so Pofu coming in. They're really going to these third and fourth stringers now. They have to, the Cats, to get these points on the board. High tempo, no huddle offence again for Rivet, and the crowd have exploded. Going to the corner of the end zone. Oh, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. And Pofu. And Pofu indeed, Carl. Yeah, that's the second time they've gone to him. He's coming in to help out his team. We've not seen him so far in the game, but here he is after the injury to Keoli Dennis and Michael Johnson. It's going to be down to Mpofo and others to make a difference. Second and goal from the nine. Rivet immediately faces pressure and he tries to step up and then puts the ball over the top, over the top of everybody. A big pressure. Oh, now then. Now we have a little bit of handbags. As one of the cats took offence at something that was said. And Lewis Smith from the Pirates ends up on the floor. And remarkably, no flag call. I like this crew. <laughs> I like them a lot. <laughs> you know, you have these little niggles. The referees will just say, you know, they have the discretion to issue a warning rather than throw the flag. Just say, calm down, lads. Otherwise, we will have to throw the flag. And sometimes the threat is better than the execution. Third down, third and goal, Rivet drops back, pressure coming, got a man in and out of the hands. The intended receiver that time, James Horn, who made that big play earlier on, the backup quarterback. And if anything, that ball was slightly on the back shoulder of Horn, didn't really lead him. Although there was trouble in the middle, the way Horn was moving, so maybe Rivet was thinking, well, if I put it on your back shoulder, I won't lead you into those linebacking trouble. Here it is, fourth and goal. Could be the last hope for the Cats. Into the hands of Horn again, and he's dragged down a yard short. In fact, it's not Horn that time, it's Neil Dempsey. And it's turnover on down for the Pirates. Oh. Incredible stuff. Heartbreaking for the Cats, so, so close. 
to getting their first score on the board. And it was Dempsey just dragged down. What an effort by the EKP defence to keep Dempsey out. Here it is. It's a nice, beautifully thrown slant ball. But look at the drag back and the pull down of the upper body and making sure that there's no way is Kerr Stewart, the former Sterling Klansman, to make sure that he can't lean his upper body into the end zone. Oh, his feet were across the goal line, but obviously it doesn't matter where your feet are, it's where that ball ends up. So, do the Cats bring pressure here on Bapti? First down, Bapti to the air, and he's going up top, and that's intercepted again! Bapti, back-to-back interceptions, it's McLaughlin once more! And that looked like a receiver catching the ball. Mikey McLaughlin with his second pick, but there is a flag on the play. Now, where the flag is in the, is in the realm of holding, and if it is in the realm of holding, that, that interception will stand. I don't know what Baptiste thinking. <laughs> Throwing the ball out of his own end zone. Here it is, here it is anyway. I guess he's just got so much confidence, these EKP Pirates, but McLaughlin again right there two picks he's had four already on the season for 41 return yards and he's adding another two to his tally this season after the interception a flag is thrown that flag is currently under review so the interception will count Carl because after the interception the flag was thrown so it will be Cats football I don't know whether it was a horse collar I don't know what, I don't know what they're looking at because we've not had an explanation look at this tackle here at the end yeah, it doesn't look like there's a horse collar on that one don't know what they're looking at. But we'll find out soon enough. There is the interception. It was a fantastic catch. Trying to get the ball there to their tight end, Fraser McDonald. But McLaughlin right there with a better angle on the football. Couldn't quite spot there what our replay crew were looking for that time. Rivet just hoping he gets another opportunity to get the ball into the end zone. They're so close on the previous play. Referee Wickham has a decision for us. After review, after the interception, personal foul, blindside block, 30 red. 15 yards from the end of the run, but it will be a first down to Cambridge. Fortunately for 30 red, I don't have a number, a name for him rather. So whoever 30 red is, has got away with that one. I think he'd rather remain anonymous. Probably so. But there are a few of these blindside hits. You know, you do our players, we'll do you back. So there's been a little bit of that, hasn't there? And a bit, a bit, bit of tit for tat going on. Replay officials, Jed Brooks Lewis and Jim, Prig, Jim Briggs. Now, there is an injured EKP that? player that's just being uh, helped off the field. Another O lineman. And that is big number 78 by the looks of things. That is Ben Thompson. So we hope he's okay. Looks like a lower leg injury. He's just uh, favouring that left leg at the moment. The sun definitely shining on the cats at the moment at the end of this second period. See if they can take advantage this time. After the penalty, they'll start on the EKP 30 yard line. Not much time left in this half. They're going to have to put something into the air quickly. Rivet with trips to his left. Everyone coming. Steps up again, he's in trouble and he's going down. No, he's not. He is now. First time, he's into... Oh, my word. I'm really sorry, Carl. There was too much going on that play for me to actually compute. <laughs> to start with, it appeared that Rivet was going to go down under pressure. He eluded the first tackle, then got dragged down the second tackle. But before he hit the floor, he inexplicably tossed the ball away. That was nearly intercepted by Killian Voigt. But that falls incomplete, and after all that, it's second and ten. You know what causes that, Matt? What's that? Pressure. On and the commentator. Come again. On the commentator. Oh, everyone. Second and ten, Rivet with those three Here men outside come. him. He's going upstairs once again, and that's going to be in and out of the hands of Ryan Miller. And again, flag back near the quarterback. And it's all going off at the end here, Cole. Well, that's going to be a hole, just trying to protect their quarterback from the wrath of this EKP blitz. 
I think it's going to might go against the defense from what I'm hearing. Off Although, to play, personal foul, 24 mm. on the offense, 15 so, yards, third down. So that's Mark Womble showing some frustration. And it's still first down. Well, they had the oh, blind sorry. side hit and then they had the unsportsmanlike like conduct on that one. That's 30 yards of penalties and their dreams of getting into the end zone before the half ends have been wiped out. It's third by the down. the men in uh, white and black. Yeah, third down call after that. And it is third and 25 now. Rivet's going to be facing some pressure again. See how many they bring. They bring five, and then one drops off. Rivet rolls to his right, puts the ball to the sideline, and that's incomplete again. Great coverage, great pressure. Rivet slow to get up. At the back end of that throw, even though he got the ball away, he took a shot. Kerr Stewart on the coverage that time. Rivet at 50%. Stewart on the pressure again. 12 out of 24. Rivet in this first half. And after a second interception by McLaughlin, the Cats can't convert that into points. And in fact, have lost a significant amount of yardage. Punt team return. The fifth three and out of the afternoon, the seventh punt of this first half. And Strew and Bailey fields off a one hopper inside the 10, gets to the 20 and is met at the 25, falls forward to the 28 yard line. I mean, it's been some decent punts by Mark Finbo, who's an offensive lineman. You don't see an offensive lineman as a punter that often, but he's done a good job. But Strew and Bailey. The GB wide receiver has just been picking everything 16 up. 16 seconds at the change of possession. 16 seconds. And getting some great returns in. Do EKP sit on this with 16 seconds to go? You'd think so, surely. How ruthless are they feeling? Bearing in mind that Baptiste's last two passes have been intercepted by McLaughlin. Well, you didn't need to throw them either. So, you know, EKP are doing what they've done to get them here, which is be themselves. So he does throw out to the flats. And Black has the ball, bounces to the outside. First down, EKP, and out of bounds. First down, Pirates. Seventh completion of the afternoon for Bapti. He's seven out of 12. One touchdown, two interceptions in the first half. Bapti keeps it, play action again, and he's going over the middle, and it's picked nearly for a third time. Tom Mann made an athletic attempt to grab that one. And on the last play of the half, that falls incomplete. This and is our the score. end of the first half. The end of the first half. Our score remains East Kilbride 28 and the Cambridgeshire Cats 0. Well, <laughs> breathless, Carl. I mean, it seems to have gone on a while, to be honest, but it seems to have just had so much in it. Does an EKP come out and turn the opening kickoff? And they've just been full pelt, held for leather, 100%, going at everything. The whole of the half, they were 21 nothing up at Q1, and uh, you know the Cambridge were just happy that they managed to slow them down in the second quarter. Just the one score, I think. So basically, as you mentioned, things got underway right from the off. As Strew and Bailey returned the kick 90 yards for a touchdown on the opening kick return, and here he is, Mike Michael Johnson kicking off. Great blocking again, Cole. Yeah, Strew and Bailey up the right-hand side. Watch McIntosh, who's escorted him all of the game. Look at the speed of that offensive line. Gets in the way of number 87 and just escorts.
Gort, Strew and Bailey into the end zone. And then the second score of the afternoon saw Dougie Meekin waltz in from a yard away to double the advantage for the Pirates. More great blocking on that line. You'll see uh, lots of great blocks coming in from EKP to enable these touchdowns. They Here's took... A, they took one drive off and then Greg Black waltzed in from three yards. The third score of the afternoon. Yeah, and then it was the play. Well, this one actually came back on a flag. So this was a, a touchdown that never was. And that was to tight end Fraser McDonald. Yeah, that was the block in the back court, wasn't it? And here is Struan Bailey with your man in front there, number 71. Yeah, what a great in. And just look at the way Struan Bailey uses his his offensive lineman and look at this acknowledgement at the end on you and they're just enjoying that one together in the end zone as EKP have done for the whole of the first half it's been a devastating to play uh, of really good well executed football across all three units and although the Cambridgeshire Cats really did mount a bit of a comeback two late interceptions by McLaughlin to give them an opportunity to score they just couldn't break through EKP and that gives us this scoreline of the EKP, or the East Kilbride Pirates rather, 28 and the Cambridgeshire Cats nil. Cole, you and I need to go and towel down, have a drink and get ready for the second half. We'll see you in about 10 minutes.
Welcome back here to halftime at the New River Stadium in this Division 1 matchup between the East Kilbride Pirates and the Cambridgeshire Cats. And you can see the dominance of the Pirates on your screen. At the moment at halftime, it has been all Pirates right from the opening kickoff. And Strew and Bailey went 90 yards for the score to open things up. Two rushing touchdowns then in close succession from Meekin and Black before Strew and Bailey rounded off the scoring for the first half with a touchdown reception scamper into the end zone. The Cats showed signs of life towards the end of the first half with two interceptions by McLaughlin. But unfortunately for the Cambridge side, they couldn't take advantage of those turnovers. And EKP stiffened, held their resolve, and we have the result. As is right now, 28-0 in favour of the Scottish outfit. Carl, one-sided on the scoreboard. Was it that way on the field? I mean, if you look at the stats for the Cambridge Cats quarterback, you know, you'd say no, because he's, you know, he's completing passes, he's Mark Rivett. But uh, it just wasn't enough in terms of trying to get into the end zone. You know, he's um, got 25 passes and he's completed 12 of them. But I look, 12 or 25, that's like a 50%, which is kind of consistent with how his season's been, about a 53% completion rate throughout the season. But, you know, the scores have been very different. And t scoring 28 points is way, way above what the normally the Cambridgeshire Cats defence would allow. But what you've seen from the East Kilbride Pirates is attention to detail, really great blocking. I mean, I've been so impressed by this offensive line and the way they're drilled and the, the way they run this run option. You can see Spoony there, the architect of the East Kilbride Pirates for so many years, both at junior level and at senior level. Not now involved, gone on to do other things, got his own business, and he's doing all sorts of great stuff around leadership in business. But for so long, he's been leadership in American football, and he's still involved with the Great Britain team. His legacy is that the EKP Pirates will come back into premiership football. They're already there. And on this outing, they're going to give Tamworth and Manchester and others a big run for their money in that North Division. I'm excited for next season to see how they match up against somebody like the Titans, against somebody like Tamworth, as they've done in previous seasons. But you know, everyone's level of football is rising. EKP currently really on top of their game. Nothing else, Carl. Part of the challenge with EKP is actually going up to East Kilbride. It's always a, a difficult away trip. But yeah, I agree with you. And in terms of that 28-0 scoreline, there were 14 points that the Pirates left out there as well. One for a uh, penalty, one that Mark Stewart ripped the ball out of the quarterback's hands, scooted into the end zone. That could have been another. So we could be looking almost at a, a 42-0 half-time deficit for the Cats. But but there were also chances for the Cats. You know, Dempsey being dragged back. You know, all he had to do was lean over, just reach out, and he would have had the, the six points for Cambridge here. So they, they've had their chances as well. But as I say, EKP have been so on it in terms of just preventing the Cats from getting into the end zone. You also have to mention the injuries that Cambridge here have suffered. Michael Johnson, their absolute star receiver, over a 1,000 yards receiving in eight games, goes out with an injury very early on, and he doesn't come back. You've had other injuries, number 32 on the defence as well. So um, you've had a pile of stuff that's you know, put the Cambridge Cats behind the sticks, and they continue to be. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see whether or not Michael Johnson does come back in this second half. The kicking team on the field ready for the Pirates. And it's Caldwell ready to kick off number 20. And the Cats showed some good energy in second half warm-ups. Let's see if they can transfer that onto the field and get themselves back into this one. I know it's a big ask, like you say, with all those losses, but you've got to try and think about it this way as well. The Pirates have scored 28 points in one half. We need now to do the same. And well, again, they scored 21 points in one quarter. Well, they did indeed, absolutely so. Still no sign of Johnson, particularly on the return team for the uh, Cats. And the one bonus is they will receive the ball at the start of the second half and as the sun now disappears behind the soft cloud coverage that we've got. And that is in Coyote Dennis who is back returning for the Cats, which is great to see. And he acts as cheerleader for the crowd supporting the men from Cambridgeshire. So here we go then. The final half of action from Brit Bowl 34 weekend is underway. 
And it's Dennis, not Dennis. It's number 83 who's going to return, and he takes it up to the 35, close to the 40, and he's still on his feet, past midfield, and he's all the way out to the EKP 46-yard line. All right, that's a way to get started in the second half. EKP, Cambridgeshire won the, to won the toss, didn't they, and then deferred, so they wanted this ball, and here's that kick return. Malik Adai picks that ball up. So it's a die to his right-hand side. He wastes no time ducking, weaving, diving. And that's a really good, aggressive return. Just that 55 able to come over Michael Gervin and stop the touchdown. All right, you've got a good field position. What can you do with it? Rivet with trips to his right. First down. Going to the air again. He's under pressure. Nobody available, but he does connect. Picks up three yards on first down. Ben Bingham into the game with the reception. That's a positive start for the Cats. You kind of feel like they have to score on every drive in this second half to give themselves any chance and then their defence step up as well. But a positive start on first down for Rivet. Twins either side now, receivers. One man in the backfield. Ball quickly into the hands of his receiver. James Horn, who fights for extra yardage. And should have enough for a first down. Indeed, good start for the Cats. They're going to move the sticks. We're just waiting to see. This is the Cambridge Cats offence that we expected to see coming into this game. This is what we saw a bit of in the first quarter. Moving the ball quickly, no huddle, keeping their defence off balance. And I think moving the ball through the air is probably where they're going to get most success because that defensive front of the Pirates has proved almost like a wall in that first half. Pressure coming again. Rivet steps up but can't step out of the way of Mark Stewart but gets very well Oh, Ball's out! Again, everything happening! Incomplete pass at the end. So Rivet managed to keep Mark Stewart from bringing him down to the ground. Flung the ball out to Neil Dempsey. Dempsey we thought made the reception but fortunately for him it was called incomplete. So no fumble. Stewart with the pressure on the quarterback and then Gervin with the immediate tackle to lodge that ball free, incomplete. Second and ten, Cats. This could be a free play. No flags. Ball is up anyway. Ooh, looking for flags again for pass interference, but nothing doing there. Good coverage by the Pirates. Ryan Miller. Absolutely the right call. Ryan Miller going for the ball, got his head round, saw the ball. You can go through the receiver if you're going for the football, and he absolutely was. Good, good no call. Ben Bingham, the intended receiver there for the Cats, brings up a big third and ten on this opening drive. I think realistically this is still four down territory with 28 nil down. Second half, D1 Championship, New River Stadium, North London. Rivet to the air again. Puts the ball up and over and in and out of the hands of an EKP defender. Lucky on that one. Brody McDonald had a chance to snag that one and just went through as he slid. You didn't see, but Rivet wanted that one back. He's there working on his mechanics. You know when you do work on your mechanics on air? Oh, I was off my back foot. He's practising getting that weight shifted to his front foot because if you have it on the back foot, your ball's just going to sail on you like that one. But here we go, fourth down. We did predict they would stay out on fourth down, being on the 32-yard line, and Rivet now has to roll to his right, puts the ball there, and he's got a man! Ben Bingham, I believe, number 13 at a glance. You're right, Matt, yeah, Bingham with a really nice reception. Roll in the pocket, doesn't allow Mark Stewart to get pressure. If you roll the pocket slightly, Rivet, good on the run, took that step, delivered a bomb. Tenth first down of the game for the Cats. Tenth. Tenth first down. First down, Cats. Here we go then, Rivet again. Got the offence working a little bit. Has to get rid of that quickly. Womble wasn't expecting it quite so soon, but Rivet had no choice with the pressure he was under. Second down and ten, but obviously proved that they can get it on fourth and ten. So on the board it says third on your screen. It's actually second and ten now that's for the, these cats. That's the third quarter, but yes, we've just lost for the time being our down and distance marker. We'll keep you up to date with that. Second and ten for the cats. 
Rivet threatening inside the red zone for the first time, and that's a false start. Unfortunately, James Horn's done good, some good stuff during the game. That isn't one of his good things as he's going to march them back. Offense, number 18. Five yards, still second down. So, yeah, five yard penalty against the Cats. Announced by our referee this evening, Keith Wickham, who leads Kenneth Glover, Stuart Tabera, Dean Wright, Henry Young, Tim Ockenden, Henry Richardson, and Richard Moger for our last officiating crew of this Brit Ball weekend. Big thanks to all the crews who have made these games possible. Second and 15, Cats. Rivet, four receivers again. He knows he's going to be under pressure, and I think that's a false start. I think it is a false start. One of the linemen seemed to move. And unfortunately, I think that one's coming back. But, I say unfortunately, who made that reception? Michael Johnson back in the game, number four. So we haven't seen him since early in the first quarter. But that number four jersey's back on. Now he was tending a leg injury. He's an absolutely critical player, over a thousand yards receiving this season. Let's hear from the referee in terms of whether this was a D or an offensive penalty. There are two penalties on the play. Offside by number 50 on the defense. That will be declined. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 50 on the defence. Half the distance from the completed pass, first down. Mark Stewart there guilty of both penalties. One offside, one roughing the passer. And the roughing the passer penalty will be always be the one that's enforced in that situation. You know what, when you're a coach and you're dealing with a player of that sort of calibre, sometimes you just go, all right, stuff happens. He's such a devastating weapon though on defence, isn't he? Look at him there. Just uh, prowling around that line of scrimmage, ready to go again. Here he comes. Tight coverage for Rivet. Rivet goes to the back corner of the end zone. And Johnson makes the reception. Touchdown, Cats. They're on the board. Their talisman returns to ignite a spark. Well, he came back on the field and the whole place just lit up. That's what a great receiver can do for you. And it doesn't matter whether he's at full strength or not. Just the very fact that he will be there on the field will put the rest of EKP defence under pressure. Michael Johnson makes an immediate impact. 15th completion of the evening for Rivet. 15 of 30. And a touchdown. And that'll give the Cats some belief, but the defence needs to do the job now as well. As on to the extra point is Mark Finbo. Oh, a little bit of confusion there. There was a flag down prior to the snap taking place. But that's exactly what the Cambridgeshire Cats needed, not only for their hopes, but equally what the neutral wanted for this game. Still a long way to go for these Cats, but they have their star receiver back and that will lift everyone. Just wait to get to the bottom of this one. So, don't count those cats out yet. Before the play began, we have a substitution infraction by the offence. Five yards, it remains a try. Yeah, there was a uh, late addition to the special teams unit there for the Cats. Ran on a little bit late. Substitution infraction, which will march them back five yards. Interesting. I'm getting messages, as I do, from various people during commentary. And uh, I've been chatting about whether or not there might be a shutout on the cards. And his reply was, well, we were up against the Cats 20-6 to earlier this year. And they ended up losing. We ended up losing to them. And then he's put, I think that would require number four to miraculously feel better and get their offence going. Well... It appears number four is miraculously feeling better. And on that offensive series, they started on their own 45 on the EKP 45 yard line after that great return. And they've marched it down the field to pay dirt. Kick is blocked. And that is a live ball still. The ball is picked up by Brody McDonald. And that's where that one will end. But nevertheless, the Cambridgeshire Cats are on the board. 28 to 6 in favour of the EKP outfit. And now can the defence of Cambridgeshire 
step up and say, right, offence, you've done your job. Our turn to respond. Great drive from the Cats. And hats off to the coaching staff for making that happen. When you get a, a break as you're doing half-time and you get an opportunity to talk to your players, but it's only for a very short amount of time, you have to get your messages absolutely as concise as possible and get your offence onto the field in a state where they feel mentally and physically ready to drive down the field, and that's what the coaching staff did. So hats off to them to do that. Well done, HC uh, White Oak, for making that happen. Andrew McBride and the ever-dangerous Struan Bailey wait at the 10-yard line. And if we're honest, the Cats would be wise to kick it away from Bailey, given the impact he's had so far on offence and special teams. He's standing pretty much in this position at the beginning of the game when he took the ball 90 yards for the opening score. Finbo puts the ball deep. And it is Bailey who's going to receive a little bobble, but he does manage to, to uh, maintain possession. He just saunters up to the 40, then to the 50, into Cats territory. And he's upended inside the 35 to the 30. And it may well be his own player he tripped up. Yeah, I think it was. 27, Kerr Stewart, that ended up tripping up. Strew and Bailey. And he's just limping off the field. And there is a flag. Have a look at this. Look at Here's the replay. Again, so patient. The blocking. Watch the blocking there from the lead up back. Then there's great blocking downfield. There's 27. He so gets a shove. Turn. Hold by number six. Returning team, 10 yards from the flag. First down. I don't think number six could have been holding and running the ball at the same time, Matt. Unless he's been called for holding the ball. <laughs> I've never seen that called. Strew and Bailey doing it all, holding and running the ball at the same time. Now, the number's wrong, but I'm sure the call's right. In the end, it was 77 for the Cats, pushing 27 into his own player that actually got Strew and Bailey down on the ground. So they get led off there to this Cats defence, but they've got to do something to stop the relentless march of the Pirates. Half the field to go for Bapti and the Pirates, starting at midfield. Black shifts into the backfield alongside Bapti. Black takes the opening handoff. Manages to pick up a yard, but no more. It's good play by the Cats defence. Three players in the backfield. One in front, two to each side of Struan Bailey. That's what you need to get this man down. So Greg Black comes back to the huddle after his latest adventure with the football second and nine facing the pirates at the moment two receivers either side again that's going to be a backward pass to black and black catches it very well and then's met in cats territory pick up of a couple which will bring up third and five we haven't had a chance to call out some of these defenders, but Hayden Whiffin coming in there to make the tackle for the Cats and uh, Ryan Wilson, also defensive lineman, coming over to make the play on black. Third and six, another critical defensive third down. They've been really effective, the Pirates, on third down, just getting the ball out wide and then allowing these blockers to create space. Bit of a mismatch there. At the slot receiver position, linebacker lined up on a slot receiver position. You can see there in the middle of your field. Let's see if Bapti takes advantage of that. And he goes the other way and he's got his man. And that's the first down, Pirates. Scott McKiggan with the reception and the first down for EKP. Quick slant play. They've been running the ball so, so quick to the flats, you don't expect the slant. You expect something into the flats and then blockers coming on you. But just running that quick slant, three-step drop across and well-timed Pat and McKiggan gets into the game. Just perfect conditions for football here this evening. Slight breeze, nice temperature. It's great that these teams can showcase all aspects of the game on the ground through the air as Bapti tries to go up top again. Now it's to roll left. He puts the ball up and that is going to be well defended. Rob Hayes with the intended receiver. Flags in the backfield, which would suggest maybe holding against the offence as Bapti was rolling out to his left. 
As Bapti rolls, everyone else rolls. The running backs roll, the, the Holding, offensive offense, linemen roll. Number 50. 10 yards, still first down. So that is on Mark Stewart, who's also playing on the offensive line. So Mark Stewart again. A couple of uh, penalties roughing the passer. So first and 20. Is the tide turning ever so slightly in favour of the Cats? Baptiste swings it out, and that's in and out of the hands of McDonald. You can feel a little something in the air, Cole. Yeah, rare drop by McDonald, the penalty by Stewart. Just those little things that add up to great execution when you don't get them done. The down saloon tick away. Second and 20. EKP just inside the Cats half. Play action once again. Bapti forced to roll again and he now is trying to make one man miss and he does. And he's now in the land of linebackers on the edge. He picks up four or five yards and you know the Cats are trying to rip that ball down. But nevertheless, five Cats there to take down Bapti. Third and long upcoming. Hayden Whiffin there. Ben Bailey there, 56 and 57, chasing down this agile quarterback, this difficult quarterback to bring down. Baptiz done just about everything today, hasn't he? Thrown deep balls and runs well and difficult player to play against. Now you can see the light fading, so floodlights are the case in point. Beautiful sky here this evening. I say it's interesting, the Cats now getting some pressure on Bapti and forcing him to roll out. Which obviously is just unsettling him a little bit, it's hazing motion. Bapti hands off this time and there is space now. Bouncing outside is Black and Black is not going to pick up the first down but it's a good run again. And I think what it might do is encourage EKP to go for this on fourth down. Malika Dai has to come off his block. Scramble with his feet to get that runner down. Fourth and manageable mm. in Cambridgeshire territory. Now this would be a huge stop for the Cats, but equally a huge conversion for the Pirates. Tight formation this time. And it's a little pitch out to the left. How well can the Cats defend it? Not well enough, first down, EKP. Mike McLaughlin will be kicking himself. He's had a couple of picks today, but he uh, wasn't able to get Black. They met one and one in a hole. If you get to see a replay, you'll see the quick feet of Black as he dances around McLaughlin. It picks up a first down for this EKP offense. That'll just knock the wind out of this Cats defense once again. Teetering on a knife edge, 28-6. Seems a difficult lead, but if the Cats could find some way to stop EKP here, score again, then anything's possible. EKP score again here? Well, it could be the end. Swinging the ball out to Black. And Black makes a nice cut, then another one. And picks up five, maybe six yards on first down. Just extended handoffs, aren't they, to their best athletes. Get one out to Black get one out to you know those receivers on the sideline get one out to Bailey it's just so many weapons on this team and each of them have those quick moves just give them a little bit of space and they can make something happen second and a long four short five seems a bit daft me saying that but that's kind of when it's neither four yards or five yards so it's a uh, technically second and four and a half Pirates ominously into the red zone once again. Bapti ominously to the air, goes over the top, completely unmarked, sidesteps the man, and EKP in the shape of Andrew McBride tag on another touchdown in this D1 final. Yep. They made that one look easy. It was a little 
He had two options. He could have gone to the running back, could Bailey, or he could have gone deep. He shows the ball, he sort of slightly flicks his shoulder. And then he goes over the top. You'll see it here. Watch. He's got the option to go to 28. He flicks his shoulder and then decides he's going to go deep over the top. And a wide open Andrew McBride takes it in untouched. And that will be 34 to East Kilbride. Cambridge here. Just that one touchdown at the beginning of the second half. I feel for the Cats have had any chance in this one. They needed to shut out the Pirates in the second half, which is always going to be a big ask. Hold is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. And now there's a flag and it erupts on the field. Flags everywhere. And frustration boiling over. That escalated quickly, Colt. Yeah, it's been brewing, hasn't it? I mean, the referees have been good. They've not thrown the flags. But that you've got to throw the flag when you're losing control of the game you know it's a, it's a fine line the referees have to draw which is you know you don't want to throw a flag on every little you know mouthing off or issues that are going you know six of half half a dozen of the other but when you see something like that you've got to get those flags in there to take control of the game remind that the games that uh, right remind the players that they're in a game and there are rules here and we have to adhere to them well the amount that came out there Carl everyone obviously saw it here we go the score is good after play we have two fouls that will offset a late hit, sorry, an unsportsmanlike conduct by number 50, by 70 red, and an unsportsmanlike conduct by number 75 black. That's both players first unsportsmanlike, so said they will offset, will go to the kickoff. Mike Lee and Craig Robertson, respectively, guilty of those offsetting penalties. You can understand it. There's Early evening turns into night time. You can see a difference in the light in here in the stadium. Unfortunately for the Cats, their chances are only a glimmer against these mighty East Kilbride Pirates. We're still in the third quarter. Who knows where this one may go? Remember the 9-1 and one Pirates taking on the 8-2 and two Cats. Cats the SFC 1 East champs and the Pirates the NFC 1 North champs. Can you pick out any, as we uh, walk through this third quarter, pick out some of your favourite moments from this weekend, Carl, in general? I'll let you have a think about it. I mean, I, I don't know whether people have seen on social media some of the pictures that came back on the Manchester Titans victory from last night with those fireworks going off in the background, the streamers, and just being here in the atmosphere was magical. So I don't have to think much about my number one. That would be Manchester forever winning in the final. I think I agree with you being part of that. As the ball is fielded up to the 20, past the 30, but no further... And the 32-yard line goes Davis, oh, Dennis rather, Cody Dennis. Great to see him back contributing for the Cats. Not only do the Cats need a number of scores, but they need them quickly now. And then they need the defence to step up and somehow stop the Bapti, Bailey, Black, Meekin, Hayes show of the Pirates on offence. Neil Dempsey there taking his position at receiver on the far side of the field as you look. Cats will be saying to themselves, let's win this second half. And at the minute, they're losing it 7-6, Carl. Let's see what Rivet can do about that low handoff. But the ball is handed off and plenty of room for the running back. That running back, Mark Womble. Picks up a first down for the Cats. Takes a nice angle on that. Does Womble. Just cutting across the face of the quarterback and then stays at a good angle. Difficult to pursue. Picks up as much as he can, which includes the first down. 
11th first down of the evening. 12th first down of the evening, my mistake for the Cats. Move the ball well, and Rivet gets that ball away, and it's Michael Johnson once again. And Johnson picks up the second consecutive first down. What a difference he would have been if they'd have had him in the first half, Carl. And if he'd have been fully fit, you can see him slightly limping there. I mean, you know, at 70%, I'd rather have him on the field. But uh, he's not at 100%. Still giving his all. To the air again, going over the top, and it's intercepted! Athletically done by Marcus Galanti. And just when you think the Cats have got something going, the Pirates go, uh-uh, not tonight. Rivet trying to get the ball over the top to James Horn. But Galanti was right there in front of the receiver. You'll see here, Rivet takes a look. He thinks he's got it, but there's that defender just lurking in that zone, just ready to pick that one off. First down, Pirates. Still going to the air. Finds his man in the middle and it's ripped out. Good reception initially by Craig Black, but outstanding play by Tom Mace, Tom Mann. You saw that car, made the initial hit, but then went straight for the ball and pulled that out and another turnover. There he is, and that's, that's just fantastic defensive play. That's what you should be doing. Mann, one of the leading tacklers on this team. Already made 38 solo tackles this season. And he manages to cause a, a fumble there. He's had uh, various tackles for losses during the season. Let's have a look at it here. See if we can get the ball, uh, get the camera on the reception. You'll see it, the ball coming out. And it's a forced fumble and recovery by Mann as we go back to the live action. Incomplete. Oh. Looking for Ben Bingham once again. So it's kind of like the Cats just had one playoff, throw the interception, one playoff, straight back more or less where they were intercepted. That's exciting, Cole. Cats still looking to make a game of it, which is good, and credit to them. If the Cats had played like this at the beginning of the game, could have been a very different story. Johnson in the slot at the bottom of your screen. There he goes, and they try and get it to him, and they do, and he's in acres of space. Makes one mass miss, makes another man miss. He's rangy, he's close, and he's down inside the 10 to the five-yard line. Bounces up. Fair play. Such a shame he had to miss the majority of that first half as an EKP defender remains on the turf. Such a rangy stride he's got. But he's also an ankle breaker. Watch this. Takes the catch, cut there. Another cut there. And he manages to keep his feet until it takes two pirates together to pile him out of bounds. And that's a sign of a, a great receiver. Just that is an exciting player to watch. Dances out of tackles. And you look at him and no, I've no doubt he's injured, but no strapping anywhere visibly, unless it's an ankle, obviously, that we can't see. Somebody said that they thought he was working a lower leg injury with some sort of... Um, Physiotherapy-type ball, but, you know, it's... Uh, I think it's likely some sort of hamstring twinge, you know, which comes and goes as you go through the game. Probably tomorrow morning he'll be aching, <laughs> aching all minutes, over. Just under four minutes. Just the hood, our official there, hopefully. Four Keith minutes Wickham. left in the third. Four minutes, and the Cats sideline play cheerleader for those fantastic fans. And the EKP fans respond as the cheerleading continues from both sidelines, both sets of players. Oh, just a little tingle down my spine, Carl. That was a fantastic moment. Here we go then, Rivet in the offence. Oh, fumble, Rivet can't handle the snap, and it's just sitting there. And there's another turnover for Michael Gervin. Johnny on the spot, drops on the football. Which way is this one going to go? Got players down, giving their all to entertain this crowd. Elliot Sorby, the defensive lineman for EKP, is slow getting up. Now he's on his feet, which is good to see. Ball just came out. And EKP are there to pick it up. So we've had an interception, then a forced fumble and a recovery, and now a fumble and a recovery back. So 
It's hard to keep track of who's got the ball. <laughs> no one wants it at the minute, do they? Being very generous. First down, EKP. On their own 12-yard line. Can the Cats create another turnover? Bapti. Hands the ball off. Nice little step. Out to the 25. Down at the 28-yard line. Goes Meekin. And that's going to be enough for a first down again for EKP. Tom Mann has to stand firm. That safety there just has to stand firm and take the brunt of Womble's run, but manages to bring him down to stop the touchdown. Meekin rushing the ball really well there for the Pirates. First down, EKP. Bapti maybe going to keep the ball on the floor a little more. And he does again. And there's Meekin once again. Bounces off to the right-hand side of the line. Picks up five yards. Had a great game, Meekin. Just... Sharing time between Black and Meekin in the backfield. As Johnny Hodgson stays down on the turf. It's time for the fight for the uh, Cats. Orchestrated his offense really well tonight, Bapti. Two questionable passes at the end of the first half, which led to those McLaughlin interceptions. But other than that, he's currently 12 of 19, two touchdowns, two interceptions. On the other side of the field. Mark River, 18 of 33, one touchdown, one interception. The Cats definitely been energised by the return of Michael Johnson. So we hope you've enjoyed this coverage this weekend from New River Stadium. Obviously, Baffer, in conjunction with Onside Productions, bringing you this broadcast today and yesterday. And I personally would like to give a shout-out to Steve Matthews, Tom Howe, and all the guys involved on the cameras and the runners in the production suites for putting this stream together and allowing us to bring a fantastic weekend of football to you again on National Finals Weekend. Johnny Hodgson manages to get off the field under his own stream, which is good. And we return to action, second and six. Still big shouts from that cat sideline. Bapti once again goes to the air and he looks up top on a, on a go route. And you can see the frustration, but played really well. Malik Adai. Yeah, it's really great defence there. Still, you know, this 35-6. And uh, they're still fighting these cats, especially on defence. They want to make plays. See the frustration, didn't get the pick. You know, that's standards of excellence. That's what will make a good team in the Premiership. Players that come out and care. doesn't matter what the context is. They're still wanting to make plays. So third and six, another big play for both teams. Cats have got to still believe they'll toss sweep. And uh, Meekin does ever so well, weaving and winding his way through the Cats. Defensive front into the secondary and picks up another EKP first down. Great awareness as a running back. You'll see here. Sees the original gap off to his left-hand side. Then it's blocked by 44, so he's going to wind his way back to his right-hand side and just take away the angles of those defenders. And that's just... Difficult to coach that. It's just great vision, practice, and getting the reps in. Time continues to tick in the third quarter. And the clock has been the enemy of the Cats pretty much since the end of the first quarter after they found themselves 21 nil adrift. Bapti drops once again into the pocket. Pocket collapses. And he throws towards Craig Black. The wrong side of Craig Black. Once again, Bapti throwing off his back foot dangerously. Falls harmlessly incomplete for him that time. I think it's a design screen, so he's backpedaling. 
and then trying to get it over the top of the defensive line who are bearing down upon him. But uh, incomplete on that one. Second and ten. Bapti with an empty backfield this time. Unless we see a shift as we have done earlier in the game. There's four receivers to the left here. Maybe a little jailbreak screen. Could be a free play as well. Intercepted! Cats are going to run this black. But unfortunately, I've got a feeling this is going to be against the defence, which is going to negate the third pick of the afternoon. Mikey McLaughlin again ends up with the ball in his hands. That was his third pick. Had two at the end of the... Offside. Defence. Five yards. Still second down. Well, would have been his third pick. Another interesting decision from Bapti, though. Again, where McLaughlin caught that ball, there wasn't a black shirt in sight. So second and ten becomes second and five after the five-yard penalty. Bapti this time... Not only has a running back alongside him, but he also has Craig Black there as the ball is handed off to Meekin. And Meekin dances inside the 30, down to the 20, pushed out of bounds just inside the red zone. First down, EKP looking threatening once again. Another just fantastic run from Meekin. Great vision, timing, using his blocks well, slowing down, speeding up when he sees the hole, squeezing all of every inch he can out of the play. Still executing really well, these Pirates. Long journey down, as you've mentioned yesterday from East Kilbride. Ball play action acres of time and in and out of the hands of that man again in fact this time the intended receiver was Scott McKigan and look at the time Baptie had there yeah Mikey McLaughlin's played well today two picks he's defended the ball well he's been caught out a couple of times on some run plays but these are exceptional running backs uh, that's a nice bit of defending you'll see here Bapti waits, waits, waits. No pressure at all. There is a hold that's mixed. But there you see the bat down from McLaughlin. Really, really good defensive back play. Great spot call. Outstanding call. Outstanding play by McLaughlin. As you say, he's had the ball in his hands three times for interceptions. One wiped off by a penalty. A bat down there. He's balling out. And the dying embers of this third quarter. Pump fake. Ball in and out of the hands of Craig Black. The Cats were bringing pressure. Cats were bringing pressure early on in this quarter, and now that seems to have subsided a little. And uh, Neil Bapti has plenty of time in the pocket there to sit down and try and carve this secondary apart. I think I heard from the sideline cam as well. Mark Stewart, number 50, being offered out on a date by maybe some of the... I heard somebody say, do you want to go? So uh, maybe it's improving relationships between Cambridge and EKP there. Very nice to hear. Where I come from, you leave with the one who brung you, Matt. Back on the bus. Third and 11. Time again for Bapti, but now he feels pressure from the backside. And he rolls, he puts the ball up. And it is in and out of the hands of Black again. And great defensive work by number 87. We've called his name a few times, Malik Adai. Considerable play there against a much taller receiver. Yeah, these DBs have played well. You can see top of your screen there, needing to shift his hips and move really well on the move. And just attacking the basket. Yeah, it's a close call, but you know what? Give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, you could argue there might have been a little bit of P.I. there. Adai might have laid hands 
on black prior to the arrival of the football. But yeah, the, uh, the officials letting them play. 35-6 in favour of the Pirates. And on comes the field goal unit. This will be a 40-yard field goal if successful. Delay of game, offence, number four. Five yards, remains fourth down. Maybe a 45-yard field goal if they elect to go for it. Why not? Yeah, it'd be impressive. It would be impressive it's to see. Chance to make a great kick in a national final. Stakes are low, nice and calm. Take a few deep breaths, put your foot through it, see what you can make happen. You may wonder why it will be a 45-yard field goal when the ball is being snapped on the 30, the 28-yard line. Well, where the kicker kicking is from the 35, had 10 yards on for the end zone. Oh, it's a little fake! And now a pass, and EKP going for the jugular. Are they going to get this first down? It's going to be so tight. They're going to get it. They're going first to get down, it. EKP, razzle dazzle from the special teams. Ah, oh, you cheeky little pirates, you are. You, you are. <laughs> so they are. I can't believe you went there unintentionally. Well, we've seen it. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Here Let's it have is, a look at this. I love the play. Oh, little flick over the, the shoulder. The third quarter. That's cheeky enough, but then the rollout and the pass. And then it's just Scott McGiven pushing for that first down marker. Wow. That little pop over the shoulder from Strew and Bailey. He's done it all today. So, he's returned a kick for a touchdown. He's had a touchdown reception and he's now at a pass completion. Although it was a backward pass, so I don't know whether that counts. Will count. He has done it. He's been exceptional, hasn't he? Incredible. They still want more of these pirates. Still got their appetite. Well, that'll serve them well as they move into the Prem next year, won't it? And I love this play, but you know, it's great to have those little plays that you will. You know, they probably. You know, went to training to be if they're ever in a situation where they need a trick play, they need a touchdown rather than a field Absolutely. goal. You know, they've got that in their playbook where the coach says, Well, we, we drilled it, I'm going to run it. And so they do, and it's a first down. Great atmosphere here. We've now got Sunday night football here, courtesy of Onside Productions and the Brit Bowl 34 weekend. As the sun has set on this early September evening. New quarterback in. And the ball is, oh, in and out of the hands of the DB. Dan Smith had nothing but grass in front of him. Artificial grass at least. And Scott McDonald on now in relief of Neil Bapti. Nearly saw his first pass intercepted for six. It's a game of inches and they bring the back up on and you can see how timing so important where the Cats weren't getting to the previous quarterback, Bapti. They do get to the backup, who is Scott McDonald. McDonald second. Second and ten, man in motion. Donald going to the air again and he completes this pass this time. Out of bounds just inside the ten. Uh, Neil Baptiste Knight done then at the end of the third quarter. Scott McDonald going to take over for the remainder of the game. Neil Baptiste finishes with figures of 12 out of 22. Two TDs, two interceptions. And Scott McDonald takes over the reins. Right, 12 out of 20 rather than 22 attempts for Bapti. McDonald to the air again. In and out of the hands of Malcolm at four. And it looks like, looks like the backups are being given their opportunity to play in this national final now, Carl. The Pirates deem that 35-6 scoreline at the beginning of the fourth period is a comfortable enough cushion to give their uh, depth players a little bit of experience. 
Yeah, there'll be some supporting cast in there from the starters as well. Black still in there, number 30, and there'll be others, receivers, and maybe a tight end, just to make sure that that experience is still available to these backups. This is fourth down, fourth and nine. Can technically get a first down still without scoring. Have to get inside the one to do that, though. McDonald with trips to his left-hand side. That is a flag and more than likely for delay of game. It is signalled. Dead ball, delay of game, number four, offence. Five yards, remains fourth down. Yep, signalled by our officiating crew. And once again, one another opportunity to give those guys a shout-out. Keith Wickham, our referee. Kenneth Glover, Stuart Tabera, Dean Wright, Henry Young, Tim Ockenden, Henry Richardson and Richard Moger. With Jim Briggs and Jed Brooks-Lewis in our replay booth. Massive thanks to all the Bafra crews this weekend. So fourth and nine becomes fourth and 14. Same formation, empty backfield. Which is now put right. Trips to the left. Black came into the backfield, pressure in his face. And this one is caught! And it's caught inside the one, which will give them first and goal. Incredible! Scott McKigan with the reception. Backups now making a difference as well, making things happen in their own right. And they've been doing that the whole game, just... You know, getting in ahead of the sticks, just in that little gap where it is possible to get four downs and a shot at the end zone. So here it is, first and goal from the one. Four chances to punch it in from a yard out. Black in the backfield. Black now slots out as a receiver. So empty backfield. Now McDonald sends Black in motion and McDonald's going to try and take it himself. Still struggles, but is wrestled to the ground. Ben Bailey, amongst others there for the Cats. Second and goal. Still fighting these Cats, aren't they? Still got a lot of pride in this Cambridgeshire side. Had a great season. Come up against a really, really good EKP side. But lots to be proud of. Let's see if we can keep them out of the end zone if you're a Cats fan. Give us something to cheer about. Ball handed off this time. Are you going to do well to keep that man out of the end zone? Falls across the line. Greg Black, EKP, over 40. Third rushing touchdown of the day. Second for Black. Flags again, but that will be after the play, I would have thought. Wait to sort this one out on the field. Discussion still taking place with Keith Wickham. Here we go. Ready to give us the call. I would have thought on sports from light conduct once again. The score is good. After the score, we have penalties by off both teams, which will offset. We have a personal foul by red, a personal foul by black. That's offset. I like the way they've handled these fouls tonight. They've been fair. When you got tit for tat, that's the best way to handle it. Offset the penalties, give them a warning, move on. Absolutely. Scott McDonald moves from quarterback to kicker. Slots that one through for the extras. 42-6 to the East Kilbride Pirates. And it's now a celebration for the remainder of this fourth quarter for the Pirates. And a well-deserved one at that. Here's the touchdown of Black. 57 trying to drag him over, but look at that lean. And just he's got so much power in his legs, does Black. But uh, he manages to get that one over for the sixth touchdown of the day for these Pirates. Now this fourth quarter call may now turn to a running clock. That's right, Matt, it will, yeah. And the reason for that is the differential is 36 points. And as a result, anything over 35 points 
The officials will implement a running clock, which means there will be no stoppages unless a team calls a timeout. Ordinarily, the clock stops for incomplete passes, for running out of bounds. But there will be no stoppages now. Good to see Cody Dennis, number 17, dancing there in the backfield. He was the guy that took that big hit from Stewart, you remember, and we worried about him for a bit, so you dance away. Well, Cambridge have just got to enjoy this now, haven't they? Like we said about the D2 final, both teams have been promoted, same here. They've achieved their season goal of making it up to the next level. You've got a beautiful evening. You're in North London. Enjoy the last few minutes of this one. Fielded by... Coyote, and Coyote fumbles the football, and it is recovered by EKP. And the pain just keeps on coming for the Cats. Just another great strip sack, uh, strip tackle, isn't it? That time by Fergus McNiven comes in the special teams, makes a great play. Coyote Dennis had a rough day in the end. Got a feel for them. Got a feel for the Cats. They've just run into a brick wall on defence, a juggernaut on offence, and an inspiration on special teams. Kick return for a touchdown, forced fumble and recovery there. The latest woe. Great on extra points. Interestingly, Bapti is back in at quarterback. At 9.45, 9.45, first time out of the half, Pirates. So the Pirates call a timeout, and as I mentioned, Bapti back on the field, so... Interestingly, just one series off for Bapti. He rejoins his offensive mates. Meekin in the backfield. Maybe just needed a series off for a rest. Why not? He's worked hard. Still nine minutes to go, nine and a half minutes to go in this game. Plenty of football action left. Cats need to, you know, make something happen themselves. We need to speed up a little bit, Cole, because I'm struggling to see my notes. Players on the field have got the floodlights. We've got the light of a TV replay monitor to help us. Bapti hands the ball off, although he doesn't. He keeps it, and he's got space to the outside, and he makes one man miss. He goes upstairs and tries to hurdle the second man. Comes down to earth with a crash, but not before he's picked up another EKP first down, the 14th of the game. They don't quit, these Pirates. They don't quit on plays. They don't quit on quarters. They don't quit on games. Doesn't matter how many points they're up, they will still fight for more. They still want to get as much points as they can. Oh, and uh, Meekin makes three men miss, and he now bounces outside, heads to the end zone, no flags. Touchdown, Pirates! Meekin with his second rushing score of the afternoon. Two for Black, two for Meekin. Hard to separate them, isn't it, Black and Meekin? Two scores each and spectacular runs. Meekin just seems to have this skill of being able to switch direction and still manage to find and weave his way between these defensive players and find space. So difficult for a defence if you've got a great runner like that, it gets you all running in one direction and you just cut back against the grain. And the Cats are tired, they've done a lot of defending today. They've been in all sorts of different positions, they've had to defend options and runs and passes and a whole bunch of trick plays. They go for two to EKP and they're going to give that because that will take them to a 50 burger in the national div one final for ekp and that is scott mckiggan with the reception for two well 
50 points to six in favor of the Pirates. They've only scored more than 50 points once this season. It was in a 56-0 shutout of the Lancashire Wolverines. This, their seventh game of the season. They're rampant, these Pirates. And they've come to New River Stadium and they will claim their bounty. So the Cats will get another chance to try and leave New River Stadium with their heads held high. Quiet hush befalls the seating area at New River. As EKP kick off once again, another deep hanging kick. And here comes Dennis once again. Okay, Odie Dennis gets it out to the 26. And the Cats will go again. They won't stop. Fourteenth drive of the game for these Cats. The last couple have been a little disastrous with a fumble, interception, and the kickoff return fumble. Not been a great fourth quarter so far. Let's see if Rivet can put a positive slant on the remainder of this game. Goes to the outside, completes the pass. And now they go to that high tempo offense as James Horn reels in that ball from Rivet. No huddle again, Michael Johnson in the slot at the top of your screen. Flags on the field again. Just checking the number here. Is the referee. At 5-2-3, 5-2-3, a timeout was called by Black before the snap. So it'll be a timeout, that's their second timeout. EKP calling the timeout. They want more. So second and three for Rivet. After that reception by Horn. EKP have only punted twice this entire game, Cole. Yeah, they've been really, really great on offense with some really good athletes and a really good uh, playbook and executing their passing game and their running game yeah, with precision. Yeah. Well-oiled machine. Rivet to the air once again, completes his pass. And that's a Cats first down. Nice reception there from Horn once more. 14th first down of the game. 20th completion of the game for Mark Rivet. Offensive lineman Jonathan Williams down for a minute, but he's back on his feet. At this point, our attention turns once again to MVP voting, Cole. A number of candidates on both sides of the ball, really, for EKP. Mark Stewart on defence had an outstanding game. We talked about McLaughlin on the Cats' defence, two interceptions, back down. But then you turn your eye attention to the offence as Rivet steps up and looks over the top and he makes a beautiful completion and he's in space, he's broken free and Horn stutters at the 10, gets inside the 5 Touchdown Cats! Incredible effort from Horn Wow, out of the blue comes a fantastic play by James Horn who's listed as a backup quarterback, but has stepped into that wide receiver role brilliantly tonight. He's made a number of clutch passes. And I thought when he started that run, it was Michael Johnson yeah. ducking and diving and weaving and cutting across the field. 
Here's the replay. It's a great accurate pass here, just straight to the receiver who's able to keep his momentum moving forwards and then cutting back from his left to his right and finally outrunning. To see if his progress was short of the goal line or was a Outrunning the defensive the back field. into the end zone. But they are going to review whether his knee was down prior to him going into the end zone. Let's have a look. No, oh, give it him, Carl. I have my choice, I would. <laughs> that just shows this shows the mindset of the Pirates though, doesn't so it? So you'll either have a touchdown or you'll be very close they depending won't give which an way inch. it goes. Video review wasn't working. No, no. It's been working throughout. We've told you. You get one. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, Keith Wickham wanted us to be privy to that conversation. That is good sometimes. You get a little it bit is. of a insight into the referees, how they speak to the players and, and respectfully answer their questions. I've been impressed by this crew tonight. Andrew Evans suddenly discovering that the video replay is working now, <laughs> as it has been for the entire game. And uh, our replay officials, of Jim Briggs and Jed Brooks-Lewis, working hard this evening to get these calls right. They didn't get dressed up for nothing. <laughs> Well, I hope it is a touchdown because I've just had a lot of my review, stats. The play stands as called touchdown. So it is a touchdown for Horn. And on his 21st completion of the evening, he throws another touchdown. His second of the evening. And they do... Garner a little bit of pride there at the end of this one. And it will annoy EKP to have conceded that in such a big play as well. Griffith goes to the corner of the end zone and throws that miles away. Intended for Michael Johnson. Nothing doing, so the score remains. East Kilbride 50 and the Cambridgeshire Cats 12. 62 points in this game. No shortage of action at all. And a little bit of respect clawed back for the Cats, which I think they deserve. They've been close to the end zone before. It's not just that one big play. Dempsey was close to getting in and they had early chances. They moved the ball well. Their stats won't look too bad at all. But EKP got key turnovers when they needed to, held them on third and fourth down. And they've been the better squad, you have to say, across all the phases of the game. Tail of the tape, really. Turnovers and stoppages. The Cats have had... Three turnovers, two fumbles and an interception. They've allowed two sacks on Rivet. They've had three and outs five times. Turnover on downs twice and they've punted seven times. You look at the Pirates' sideline. Four turnovers, two fumbles, two interceptions for the Pirates. Given up one sack, only had a three and out once and only punted twice in the entire game. Four touchdowns on the ground, two touchdowns in the air. And that's one touchdown through special teams that started it all off ball drops out of the night sky now and EKP tiptoeing their way back up towards midfield another great return Christian Rabuga on the return that time one of the backup wide receivers for EKP coming in and showing his skills so we do have a, another cat injured down on the play. Um, we started talking about MVPs and then it all kicked off. Yeah, I mean, there's only one man for me. There are two men. There's one on offense for EKP and one on defense. So, and it would, for me, it would go to one of those. So my offensive MVP would be Struan Bailey. I think he is exceptional. I think from the opening kickoff, he's been incredible. And he's also got two touchdowns of his own. Um, and then on defence, it would be number 50 for EKP, which is Mr. Mark, Mark Stewart, Stewart, who uh, was, is a devastating defensive player. I look forward to seeing him next season in the Prem, uh, where I'm sure he will wreak havoc and chaos everywhere. It's a tough call because you've got two running backs. 
Meekin and Black, who have got two scores apiece. You've obviously got Bapti, who's got another completion there. And a lovely step from McKiggin. McKiggin picks up another first down. But yeah, Bapti go is now 13 of 21. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Like you say, Struan has had a massive impact on the game. I mean, the other person to mention is offensive lineman, Angus McIntosh. He's been uh, absolutely brilliant. Paving the way on more than one occasion. So EKP still with the ball, still with a familiar sight. Little pitch. This is to Black. Nowhere to go. Good defending there that time. Number 40, Dan Smith from his linebacker position coming in to tackle for a loss. Battle into the end. Stay with us at the culmination of this one as... We will bring you all the celebrations, the presentations, and we'll even try and catch you a couple of interviews with some of the main protagonists from this victorious EKP side. McDonald back on to pass, and he's got a man downfield. So McDonald now in relief once again of Baptiste. And it was McKiggin, the man who picked up the first down on the previous play, was the intended receiver. That one falls incomplete. Third and, sorry, second and 15, maybe 14. I think our caption on the screen is accurate there. EKP prepping stuff for next season now, aren't they? Keith Wickham having a conversation with his side judge. downfield by the offence, the penalties decline, second down. So third and 14 Pirates, after that penalty's declined, McDonald going back to the air again. There's no one in the vicinity that time for McDonald. He's now at 50%, three completions, three incompletions. Fourth down and 14 comes up. So as is ever likely to be the case with a 50 to 12 scoreline, this one petering out a little now. As McDonald remains on the field to punt, and then there's a, a flurry of activity on the line. And that is that. That is the end of the game. Our running clock has crept upon us, and we can say that the East Kilbride Pirates are the Division I national champions for 2022. An outstanding performance from start to finish. Plucky effort from the Cats, but they were under the cosh right from the first gun call when Struan Bailey took the opening kick 90 yards for that score and they never looked back. They were pedal to the metal the whole way through with these Pirates. Come all this way and I felt like they had all that 
pent up energy coming off that long coach trip and they just unleashed it here at New River Sports Stadium on the Cambridgeshire Cats and uh, they were really devastating to watch and what a well executed game plan you know they, they did the attention to detail really well their defense was exceptional special teams really really good all the way down to you know those plays they have at the bottom of the playbook and you know, those little trick plays I mean everything looked great didn't it it was the EKP of Premiership action that I remembered back in the Prem and it's good to see them back well just as yesterday Manchester Titans executed a perfect game in all three phases speaking to Andrew McGowan before the game head coach of the Pirates I asked him whether or not there was a a certain element of the team that is more prevalent than others and he went no do you know what I think all three sections offense defense special teams are equally important and they showed that tonight right from the off special teams carved the cats open then the defense showed its metal in the shape of Mark Stewart and Rob Bailey and then the offense went to work with that dual threat running back combo Yes! of Meekin and Black and Bailey came to play once again from his receiver position had a massive impact on the game throughout and I think they're deserved winners Cole yeah I mean they, they did and there was lots of talk I spoke to a couple of people who said well they won't you know that EKP won't be able to stay with the likes of Michael Johnson and the the play of Cambridgeshire Cats this season and I get it you know looking at Johnson looking at the play of their quarterback uh, you know Mark Rivett who's played very very well you know his stats all show that when you take a look at them but EKP for me were just on a different level tonight and the score reflects it yeah Mark Rivett 21 of 35 two touchdowns and an interception so that's a a pretty good performance like you say 15 first downs for the Cats only 12 points on the board and that's largely because there were three turnovers three three and outs two turnovers on downs and seven punts and that's going to get it done and on the other side of things Neil Bapti 13 of 21 two touchdowns and two interceptions and running back to Meekin and Black split two touchdowns apiece. And Strew and Bailey had two touchdowns of his own. One on special teams and one as a reception in his role as wide receiver. So, yeah, just spreading the ball around. And as with the Titans last night, it wasn't just one man for the Pirates that was instrumental. When you have a number of different weapons and you can find those weapons, it makes you very, very hard to defend. It does, and that's not even beginning to talk about the EKP defence and the play, not just of Mark Stewart, who was an obvious standout, but their defensive backs, the interceptions, the constant pressure of the defensive line that was putting Mark Rivett under pressure all night long. And they just didn't give him an inch. So the sun sets on this Brit Bowl weekend. It's been a fantastic festival of football here. We're going to stay with you right through the presentations. We'll try and grab you an interview with a couple of guys from EKP if we can to just bask in their glory this evening. And there is the spoils for the Pirates, the 2022 National Champion Division One trophy. And as is the case, or was the case in the D2 game earlier, Mutual respect between both teams. A little bit of niggle during the game, but you expect that when both teams are fighting hard. But you did see when Dennis went down injured, the respect that these guys have for each other when the Pirates went on and created a human barrier to give Cody Dennis a little bit of privacy. Thankfully, he got up and was able to, was able to rejoin the game. But I know the Cats will stay around and gracefully applaud the Pirates on their D1 National Championship and the Cats got to see the standard that they'll have to meet when they get into the Premiership and play the likes of the London Warriors and play the likes of the Bristol Aztecs you know they're going to need to raise their game 
to compete in that South Division. So in many ways, this was a, you know, a forewarning of things to come. And they've got that time to do that. They've got a good chunk of time now to build this team to the kind of team that can compete. But I think EKP will come into the Premiership and compete you know, really well as they are. They, are, they look like a really professional, well-oiled outfit with some great athletes, including a number of Great Britain wide receiver stars. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I mean, nobody really wants to be going into that uh, Prem South now, do you? Particularly with the Warriors playing angry like they're going to be next year. I think both of them, and it's interesting to reflect on, you know, what's stronger, the North or the South? Has the, has the power shifted to the North with the Manchester Titans win? When you look at our four games, it's split. You've got two winners from the South, two winners from the North. And that's interesting to reflect upon, obviously at different levels of the game. But it looks like we've got a great deal of parity across the country when it comes to these finals, and we've enjoyed it. As our officials collect their commemorative medals, big thanks once again to Richard Moger, Henry Richardson, Tim Ockenden, Henry Young, Dean Wright, Stuart Tabera, Kenneth Glover, and referee Keith Wickham for keeping a lid on this one and managing it very well, Carl. I agreed with you there were certain times where they could have thrown flags and didn't. And equally, our replay officials, Jim Briggs and Jed Brooks-Lewis. So you can see there, Jim collecting his commemorative medal as a way of recognition of their work this weekend. We want to thank Baffa for obviously organising this weekend behind the scenes and you see the guys around there in the, the dark blue round neck t-shirts who are always communicating with both teams and sorting out various bits and bobs like changing facilities and entrance music and all the things that you want behind the scenes you don't see but just happen automatically we had a great event at half time yesterday in the Prem final with the Hall of Fame ceremony as you see Chief Executive Pete Ackerley there presenting the Cats with their runners-up medals Russ Hewitt in the baseball cap behind integral part of Baffer along with the team and you will have seen Gary Chopperly directing the Cats towards the podium. Gary himself part of that Hall of Fame ceremony yesterday for everything he's done for British American football. Yeah, we didn't get a mention. Uh, we didn't get to mention Roel Blenman in the Hall of Fame, Stephen Hutchinson, Clive Palumbo, and my good friend and a player I used to play with uh, uh, under 19 GB level, Scott Rowe all of which are in the Hall of Fame, so it's great to be able to honour them, and I know they were, on the, they were on the field during that game yesterday being honoured, as are these Cambridge Cats as runners-up. And the noise being generated from the Cats supporters right till the end, they recognise the efforts of their team, they recognise how successful the season it's been, even though there will be a feeling of dejection right now, having lost the national final. They live to fight another day. There's Michael Johnson, number four, walking past your screen. We thought he might be a little more influential. Indeed, showed flashes of what he could do when he did take the field in the second half. And he is walking really gingerly. As he walks to rejoin his team off camera. Time to go away. Take a little bit of time. Coyote Dennis there. Number 17, collecting his medal. Appreciating it as well, nice to see. They'll reflect on this in a, a week or so's time and uh, understand what they've achieved, what a machine they came up against in the Pirates. And also what they've got to look forward to. And like you said, Cole, the work they've got to put in to go and be able to compete in that Prem South. They have, and some of the breaks just didn't go with them today. They would have liked to have competed better if they'd have had... Michael Johnson on for that big chunk of time as you said Matt earlier in the game they would have been able to compete and maybe get some points back on kill on uh, EKP but in the end uh, EKP were just too much for them even when Johnson came back on the field there was a, a breath of life for the Cambridgeshire Cats but EKP quickly snuffed it out but what a fantastic season they have had and congratulations to them 
on a really brilliant campaign. It's so hard to get in the Prem, Matt. I mean, you have no idea uh, if you're just watching this how difficult it is. And you can try for years and years and years and you, to no avail. And Cambridge Cats have done it. They've won out. And to do that is such a tremendous achievement. And they're going to be playing the top echelon of American football next year. That is something to be admired and celebrated. And uh, uh, they did ever so well to, to get there. And as the East Kilbride Pirates come and collect their D1 Champions medals, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Carl. It's not just necessarily about how difficult it is to get to the Prem, but realistically, how difficult it is to run a play. When you've got 11 men on a field and they've all got a different responsibility, and like you said about the mesh points of handoffs and read options, but just to be able to complete a pass in American football, it's a military operation. It's not easy at all. It is. It, there's um, um, you know, a million different details that go into a season, from the coaches to the kit to the stadium to the administration and the players and all the complexities around ensuring that they have everything they need to grow and making sure that your playbook is graduated so it doesn't overwhelm them. A million little things add up to a champion and uh, both these teams will be playing at the top of their sport next season in this country. There's Greg Black, number 30, just walking through there. Christopher Pollock. Some of the main protagonists and here with the baseball cap on backwards, that man Struan Bailey who set everything off at the beginning of the game. Doesn't he know he's meeting Pete Ackley? <laughs> Players just continue to come with this huge EKP squad. A proud moment for all of them. And a lot of those guys played both ways tonight. You know, you've got them listed as D-line and O-line and DB and wide receiver and giving their all whenever they were needed. Whether it's special teams, offence or defence. So yeah, the Pirates just keep coming and they've made contribution after contribution. All day, Killian Voigt there, pointing to the camera in recognition. On to the coaching staff and the assistants. General Manager Amanda McDonald around and about as well, you also, also part of the Baffer organisation. Means so much to Amanda there in the red large rimmed hat that you can see walking through. Here's Amanda, so instrumental over the years for EKP. Put such a lot of time and effort into ensuring the club remains an echelon level respective of where they should be. And running back Ryan Miller, here's Rob Hayes, number 84. Dougie McKean, Dougie Meekin rather, who once again Scored those two touchdowns. And quarterback Neil Bapti. And last but by no means least, head coach Andrew McGowan. Proud moment. Proud moment. And our MVP for the D1 final is quarterback number 13, Neil Bapti. Congratulations to Neil and all the East Kilbride Pirates on what could be described as an exhibition of football. And now, here comes Coach McGowan. Let's raise the roof, London. Your Division I National Champions 2022, the East Kilbride Pirates.
We're going to leave you with these pictures for a few minutes and we're going to pass downstairs where my good buddy Carl Walkinshaw is getting set up to try and bring you some of the atmosphere from pitch side. Love these scenes here. Pure exuberance on a Sunday evening. Travelled a long way of the Pirates. And we can pass you down now to Carl, who has somebody really important to talk to. Carl, it's over to you. Well, I'm here with Andrew McGowan who's the head coach of VKP. We're going to get our cameraman running over to say hello to you, Andrew, but in the meantime, we're on mic, so many congratulations to EKP. Was it, has it gone the way you expected tonight? Um, I, th I mean, I would like to say yes. Um, I think the guys have put in a lot of work and that just showed tonight. Um, I think we still didn't execute maybe as much as we'd like to, so going into the Prem next year, that's something to work on, but the guys have done a great job all year, so yeah, I feel like... We were confident going into that game and it, it showed the way we played here. And how does it feel to be national champions? I mean, tell me a little bit, because at EKP they've been, they were in the Premiership and then it's been a number of years kind of hiatus in Div 1, a number of different challenges and struggles that you've had and you're back. So how does that feel? Um, I mean, when we, went, when we came down or out of the Premiership, um, I mean, it was for a reason. That was the standard we were at at the time. And we played a lot of good teams in the Div 1. Um, but I think there is, there's that underlying feeling that we belong in the Prem and we've been working hard towards getting there. So we're, we're delighted we're back and, and you know fighting for that you know, Premier Ripple. And tell us about your MVP tonight, number 13, who uh, played brilliantly, as did so many players on your offence. But tell us what he means to this team. I mean, I, so I started with the Pirates the same year as Neil. Um, I've since hung up my boots, but he's obviously still playing. But... Um, Myself, Neil and one other person were part of the Brit Bowl Div 1 winning team back in 2011 against Leicester. So it means a lot for me personally that I'm sharing that with, with him. Um, he's just been excellent. Um, there was a point in this season when we weren't sure who was going to be our QB long term. Um, but about halfway through, the decision was made to go with him and he's, he's been excellent ever since. So he's, such a, he's a great leader. Um, and a great athlete, so a great guy altogether. Andrew McGowan, head coach of the Pirates, they're taking photos here right behind you, we want to get you in there off you go Andrew, congratulations <laughs> Great scenes here as you can see the East Kilbride Pirates, so elated at the win tonight, these are the cats that you can see behind you, just celebrating their season and EKP, you can see at the far end of the scoreboard, over there, just next to the scoreboard, they got that 50 burger, and they will be your champions as the Cambridgeshire Cats leave the stadium. EKP will hang around to celebrate. You can see them at the far end. Matt, Cole, how are you feeling after an exhausting weekend, sir? I feel surprisingly exuberant, actually. You know, it's a, it's been an incredible weekend. Capped off by a 62-point British final. Um, and let's do it all again sometime. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get to do it again next year. But to say to uh, all of our winners over the last two days, uh, congratulations to you all, all of our winners and all of our losers, all of which have been promoted to different areas of this. Um, and it's just been a fantastic weekend. We will sign off there from Onside Productions and from BAFA. Thank you very much for joining us for Brit Bowl weekend and we'll see you very soon with more exciting American football action but from here at the stadium here in North London goodbye for now